On this episode of Still Loading, Jimmy Woods. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Koval, and today on the show, that we're kind of uh, bookending, or kind of, it's a perfect follow-up, I should say, to last week's episode. You know, last week was a big celebration of the Famicom and the slash the NES, its 40th anniversary, at least uh, over in Japan, and uh, today we are following up that episode with a discussion on the iconic movie that featured so many Nintendo products that barely got any screen time except for like two. Uh, well, it got a decent amount of screen. Anyway, we're talking about The Wizard, the the 1989 classic question mark, The Wizard. And joining me today is returning guest from last week, uh, the art of Nintendo power himself, Stefan Reese. Stefan, how are you doing today? Uh, that's a series regular, Stefan Reese. Thank you. Series regular, that <laughs> is. Now, this is your third, oh, sorry, fourth appearance. You had two Captain N's under your belt, and now uh, the Famicom Did and The Wizard. Two? Really? That's like a fucking fever dream. I don't like, <laughs> I remember there being like ba- like basketball toilets or something. Snake toilet. <laughs> Snake, Snake toilet. That's right. <laughs> we, <laughs> we recorded those back to back in one recording session. So it was a fever dream, okay. just filled with snake toilets and dragons and strange voices. And, and uh, plot lines that started <laughs> abruptly and then ended nowhere. Kind of like The Wizard, actually. Uh, <laughs> kind of works out perfectly. And uh, the other guest joining oh. us is my good friend Jared from the Play Along podcast. Jared, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Even though it's not a Tuesday, I did eat pizza right before this recording. Oh, so, good, hey, good. it works out. The Pizza Tuesdays continue. Yeah, so for those who did not listen to Jared and I's episode uh, on New Super Mario Brothers, uh, him, Chazzy, and I were all uh, talking about that, and I, my personal experience with the game was that I w- would always play it with friends on Tuesdays. Every In college, we had our quote-unquote Pizza Tuesday crew, not very original naming. You'd eat pizza, <laughs> and it was on Tuesdays, and we'd just play video games for hours on end. Um, and so we actually did a whole Pizza Tuesday movie night where we watched The Wizard. Uh, Jared, unfortunately, could not make it due to some personal stuff, personal life issues, but we still had it. A bunch of people showed up, and we uh, watched The Wizard over Discord for about an hour. I mean, <laughs> I didn't awesome. do that. I did not broadcast a movie anywhere online. Um, wow. But movie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. oh no! It starts. It starts. Now. Oh shit! It starts now, now I'm gonna. I'm gonna be doing things like air quotes and pointing to the screen now because we're like using ca- cameras. This is not. Ah, it's fine. This is not going to be a very good podcast. I'm sorry. Well, that's. What I always. I. I'll. I'll do the stage direction. <laughs> I'll read off the <laughs> stage direction for the podcast. Uh, I do that at work. Yes. I, I like. I like point at people's powerpoints like they like. Like they can see. Like you're touching it. You're like yeah. that one. Go, no, it's I right like here. That. This one. Yeah, I picked that one. <laughs> It's yeah. like you're pointing to the other. You're pointing to no one because everyone's <laughs> screens at different spots. But yes, we are here to discuss uh, the wizard. Now, mm-hmm. my t- my my guests here come from very wildly different perspectives on this movie. Stefan, you have history with this movie, and Jared, this is your first time watching it. First time. So, uh, before I go into uh, the opening thoughts section of the of the movie. Uh, Stefan and Jared, I'd like to hear from both of you just like, oh, I guess, Jared, your mm. experience with this movie is you just watched it for the first time a few days ago. Uh, yep. So without going into too much, how was that experience? <laughs> uh, it was an interesting one for sure. I had never even heard of this movie until you mentioned it on that episode. Had no context, had no idea what it was about. So I really went in blind without really knowing what this was about. And it was uh, it was an adventure. It was <laughs> it was an adventure for sure. Was it a movie? It's on film. Technically, <laughs> technically, yes. It was, technically, it, technically was it was a movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, what about your personal experience with this? Uh, oh, that's a big, that's a big wind up. This is going to be interesting. It's fine. It's it, the movie's fine. <laughs> um, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's not as look. Everyone, I, I feel like I feel like it's either like everyone I talk to, it's either their favorite movie of all fucking time, or they absolutely they absolutely hate it. And like, I don't think it deserves as much hate as it gets because like also like some of the criticism is like oh it's a nintendo commercial and i'm sure we'll talk about that but it's really oh not God, it is it's an not hour and 40 nintendo commercial. but I, but, but it, 
It's not though. <laughs> like, it's not a. If that's what its intention was, it's not it a good one. <laughs> yeah, because they do things like oh, they reference a video game magazine. It's not Nintendo Power. They reference that's a fair. world championship. Job at it. They, they reference a world championship that is not the Nintendo World Championships. So like, I don't. W- <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Uh, so yeah, if it was intended to be a a brand commercial, it missed the mark. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I told you I was gonna come over here and shit all over your movie. Uh, I'm not, but no, but it's uh, not my movie. But I do by have all means shit all I over. I do it. have very strong opinions. For myself, obviously, I mean, I I didn't see it when it was contemporary. I saw mm. saw it well after it was a meme, and kind of had a similar reaction to you, Jared, where I was like, "All right, this this is a movie." Though watching it for this one, I was, I'm I don't. I hesitate to call it good, but I was much more <laughs> impressed by some of the things that I noticed on this watch through, which we'll get into. And that leads me to my opening thoughts, though, for all of us. And I want to ask a question for each of you. Uh, mm. Stefan, we'll start with you on this since we started with Jared before. Um, who is this movie for? We know who the movie's intended for. It's intended for kids to sell them Nintendo. But mm. when you watch the movie, that's not really who it's for based no, off I... the tones and the content. So who is this movie for? <laughs> Again, I don't I don't think it is. I don't think it's meant to sell kids video games. Like I I it, it <laughs> like yeah, like the first time that you see, like that was the first time we saw Super Mario Brothers three, or at least an early look at Super Mario Brothers three. Was that uh, the like, first time? That's wild. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why we brought it up on the new Super Mario Bros. Wii episode. It's because interesting. You, I forget exactly who asked it, but I was like, yeah, Nintendo. Like the first time we saw it in North America, like the gameplay of it uh. for the most part was in the Wizard. But sorry, go ahead, Stefan. But then there's like very, very strong storylines around presumably autism. Um, around child abuse, around alcoholism, around like mm-hmm. uh, you know kidnapping, around like and and and, and so not in like kidnapping. a not in like a fun way, uh, you know, and like <laughs> like what's kidnapping in a fun, fun kind of kidnapping? <laughs> well, like you know, like eighties camp, eighties camp kidnapping, you know, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't kindergarten cop. Um, it just like <laughs> yeah. I, um. Yeah. I don't know who it's for. I I I don't think I think there's like th- at least probably three different audiences for this film. Mm-hmm. Uh I guess so that would be probably kids that are playing video games, uh people who like like drama, uh and then uh any executive at Vision Streetwear. Um but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed but every every single child in the, that film is wearing Vision Streetwear. Um <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> fun fact. Um uh, yeah, so I, I don't know that it, it squarely hit any of those demographics. Like, I think it tried to be for yeah. too many yeah. audiences and didn't mm. actually didn't actually land for anyone. Yeah. What about you, Jared? Do you, do you, I, I'm kind of with you on this, Stefan, but Jared, do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. It, it may be blasphemy to compare these, but I had just recently watched this too, the original Super Mario Brothers movie, and mm. if you can go into that, like not seeing it, watching it in a modern era and be like, this is really bad, but like I enjoy it. I think you'll have that same feeling for the wizard. You're like, this isn't good, but like I'm kind of enjoying my time with it. But like you were saying, they tried to kind of target three different audiences, but really didn't hit on any of those. There's like they talk about like child death and everything like like weirdly yeah. deep topics and then like they're getting kidnapped and like fun music is playing in the background you're like what is happening yeah. here what's going on there's a scene in the middle of the movie that almost tackles toxic masculinity with Christian mm. Slater and Bo Bridges where like Christian Slater's character is trying to have a serious conversation about yep. a family trauma and Bo Bridges is just not having it uh Bo Bridges character is his name is Sam Woods. Christian Slater's mm-hmm. character is Nick Woods. We'll get it all into all that. And Christian Slater gets so mad at his dad, at Bo Bridges, his dad, his character's dad, because he's not talking to him about this like shared yeah. trauma they have. And he's like, I can't believe I can't talk to my dad about this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm watching this. I'm like, are they kind of like, it's not. I don't think it's necessarily intentional, but they're kind of to- tackling toxic a masculinity bit. to a to a slight extent. There, yeah. I was very surprised to see that just in the middle of the movie. You know, let's let's deal yeah. with family trauma. Well, and there's and, a lot of that too. 
And like going back to the like, okay, if it's like a pitch movie for Nintendo, how many of the games featured in that movie are first party? Did anyone pay attention to that? Uh, mm-hmm. n- there's not many because Bayou yeah. Billy's not there. It's, Ninja Gaiden's the answer is, is one. Not there. It is one. It is Super Mario Brothers Super three. Mario, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers three. <laughs> yeah, I think she, I think off maybe off screen they mention Super Mario Brothers two, like when she's talking to the Nintendo gameplay counselor. But mm. like, I think there like, is footage of yeah, that. It's like in, Ninja in Gaiden, movie. some some race game. But anyway, my, my point is is yeah. like the vast majority of the games that they feature are from a variety of different publishers and mm-hmm. no, very few of which are actually Nintendo. So I'm just like, right. Like who was this brand deal with? Like, I, like, I don't, I don't Everybody. understand. It's, it just, you just kind of chalk it up to like the captain N of it all where it's just like, there's no like quality control. It's just, you know, it is what it is. They, they Nintendo, like, so I did a little, I wasn't able to do a whole lot of research on behind the scenes stuff. It's not like I, there is a Blu-ray. You can buy this movie that has like oh. a director's commentary and stuff, which I don't own, mm, but I, I, I was I, able to find it. In, who's you the fan now? Stefano. Cause I, own it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually almost, almost on this, on the special features of that, but it, there was a scheduling conflict and I didn't end up doing it. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, the director of this movie, I, I found an interview with him, Todd Holland. Uh, he, the, he pitched himself for this movie, and the, his pitch to his pitch to the studio to get him attached to the film was like, "I don't like video games, so if I can make this interesting to me, then everyone's gonna find it interesting." Which is kind of a smart pitch, you know. Mm. Like, if I can make video games interesting to me, then people who don't like video games are gonna want to watch this movie. So I right. understand the pitch. I, I, it's smart. I get it, but it is still kind of funny just to think that um, he, after he accepted the job, there was five weeks it, he only had five weeks to prep before they started shooting so oh very God, little time after getting after getting approved to, to to direct uh it was just five weeks until then um and i don't i didn't really have the only other thing that i i i'm gonna say there's two other things left that i was able to look up one i'm gonna save to the end of the episode because it mm. involves the final scene but the other one is just that there's a lot of conflict between the director and the studio where and you what I think that's my biggest takeaway from this is based off reading this interview and seeing the movie, this dude genuinely cared about this movie in sure. like a lot. Like he really tried to make this work. Yeah, he's he's on Twitter. You can follow him on Twitter. I think it's Todd Holland three. I think is his name. Uh, <laughs> but just look for like the the Todd Holland that I'm following, and then it's like it's that guy. But um, but he he talks about it regularly, and he like very like proudly he has um jimmy's lunchbox and he like oh that's cool you know, and like that's and funny. He, he like he engages uh on on the wizard stuff like constantly on twitter he's super proud of that film that's awesome you know what that's yeah. awesome to hear regardless of how you feel about the film if he's like owning it that's yeah cool. i'm here for yeah. it well one of the things that like he fought with with this movie is that the they had to shoot too much he tried to argue with the studio mm. be like hey you're asking me to film too much. Like there's too much stuff here that's not needed at all. And the studio's like, no, you got to film it. So the original cut of this movie Weird. was over two hours. It was two and a half hours long. And he cut an hour out of it in order to make it a realistic runtime. And some of the stuff that they cut out involves with like more background into like a more background into the family tragedy, which we obviously do find out by the nice. end of the movie, but I feel like you get a little bit more context to it earlier yeah. on. You also see that uh the dad played played by Bo Bridges. You see stuff involving his alcoholism. Um, you see a lot more like you see a lot more with Haley and her world and like mm-hmm. stuff going on there. So there was, I mean, an hour is a long, a large amount to cut out. And there is a director's cut out there of this movie. If you want to watch a two Release and a half the hour Holland version. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Release the Holland cut. Two and a half hours of the wizard man. I don't know. That's is that wild. the best way to spend a Friday night or the worst way to spend a Friday night? <laughs> it depends. It depends on your mental state. If it's with a pizza coming. Tuesday, if it's, if for it's a with pizza a pizza Tuesday, Tuesday Tuesday, it's always worth it. <laughs> Two and a half hour Pizza Tuesday wizard cut. Um, all right, we can dive into this movie in earnest now. Um, okay. I'm not going to ne- like. I was. T- I, I I might not break it down as much as I do Captain N, but who knows? Maybe mm. we'll have a lot to say. Uh, mm. 
and we'll see where it goes. The movie opens. Actually, you know what? I should say that one thing. I should at least shout out the cast of this movie so people know who we're talking about when we reference the names of the characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, The movie, the premise of the movie is. Uh, Fred Savage plays a character named Corey Woods, who's trying to take his little brother Jimmy Woods, Jimmy Jimmy Woods, Jimmy, Jimmy Woods, Jimmy Woods <laughs> played by Luke Edwards, to California, uh, because his brother he like like you were saying before, Stefan. There's definitely some like on the spectrum type of vibes yeah, coming they, off I, of Jimmy. Like, I think it's 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 the eighties, so like autism mm. wasn't super well defined anyway. And like, there's also like they do. There's a couple lines where they go, "Oh yeah, he's he's had some really big." traumas obviously talking about yeah the, spoiler alert the death of his sister but like right. so like maybe it's like post-traumatic stress and maybe yeah. it's mm. but like but like with the building things and just like symptomatically yeah. like uh, it, it kind of you know screams autism i'm not i'm not of course like a doctor or anything like that but um but but yeah i mean the, it, it, i guess it, it, it was, i would say it's implied yeah mm-hmm. i would definitely say there's some implications for sure yeah uh so while they're tr- so while they're they go on a road trip across the country to California because Corey Fred Savage just really mm. wants to like cheer his brother up and his brother's being threatened to put into an institution because he's always running away trying to get to California which is actually how the movie opens and we'll get into that in a moment uh, they're chased across the country by their dad played by Bro Bridges uh, his character's name is Sam Wood Sam Woods and uh, his brother. Uh, played by Christian Slater, who was his character's name is Nick Woods. They're also being chased by this, uh, basically like the child catcher <laughs> from fucking yeah. uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or whatever. This guy's <laughs> wild. This guy is insane. <laughs> Mr. Putnam, Putnam uh, played by Will Seltzer. Uh, and the the parents are separated. Dat Bo Bridges and uh, his estranged wife, Christine Bateman, played by Wendy Phillips, and her new husband, uh, just... Mr. Bateman. He doesn't have a first name. They never mm. credit his first name. He's, He's just literally credited as a Bateman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'll get to the other character. That's pretty much all the main characters. There's a couple characters we'll meet midway through the movie, but that's all that you need to know for the beginning part. Sorry, did mm. you shout out Jenny Lewis as Haley? Uh, uh, no, because we already you? got into her, but she, is, yeah, she plays mm, Haley, the yeah. girl they meet along the way, played by Jenny Lewis. Who also uh, lead singer of Rilo Kylie. Anybody likes mm-hmm. Rylan Kylie? Also, I would leave my wife for her. So, Jenny, if you <laughs> are listening, I will leave my this. wife for you. <laughs> and, I'm sh- and his wife probably supports it, so it, it's it's not scandalous. Would not be the first time that she've heard she's heard about my love for <laughs> Her character in this is wild. I can't wait to talk about her. Oh yeah, she's her, she's I, crazy. <laughs> she starts off the movie at a hundred miles an hour, like zero <laughs> to a hundred instantly. There is yep. no chill with her. Her uh, first but, speaking <laughs> line is just she goes for it. She just goes into it. <laughs> well, okay. Okay, so the movie opens with Jimmy on the Jimmy just walking down a highway. Um, mm. And when a cop pulls him over, cop pulls up next to him because it's clear that people are looking for him. And he goes, what are you doing, son? And the first thing he just says, the iconic line, which I mm-hmm. I restrained myself from using as the intro for this, California. That, I feel like I feel like we should all get a couple of those out just so because like every time you say the word just get them out now, now before I want to stop the podcast and like actually <laughs> give it its reverence. So I'm just going to go. California. California. <laughs> okay. Right. We're going to annoy the shit out of everyone. I'm <laughs> <laughs> loving it. <laughs> Just loop uh, it. Yeah, but now I won't episode. do it every single time. That's 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 I'm true. Real, so we I'm got it out of our system them. now. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so they they pick him up. Fun fact, the cop who picks him up is a cop from Farley County. That county doesn't even exist. It's not even a real place. They they made up a nope. completely fake county to put on his bat, uh, put on the patch. I don't know why, but I just find it amusing that it is uh, a fictitious county that they use for it. Um, so because of all this, uh, his mom, Jimmy's mom, played by or her character's name is Christine, played by Wendy Phillips. Um, mm-hmm. Really, like they, they're trying to figure out what to do with him because this is not the first time he has run away, and uh, they are they're they've determined that they want to put him in some type of specialty home for basically to get the help that he needs. And it's yeah. very clear, whoever the dude that plays the stepdad is, Mr. Bateman, uh, Sam McMurray, what a performance because he plays like 
he's the biggest asshole. He is yeah. such an asshole. Like he has a very punchable face. <laughs> <in this movie. laughs> he does have a very punchable face. Uh, fun fact: He also uh, prior to this movie in 1984, he was in he. Uh, I don't know if he had a starring role, but he had a role in the movie Chud. <laughs> Weird. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> what, what? I had no idea. He plays Officer Crespi in that. He was also in Raising Arizona. Is he still acting? Adam's Family Values he was in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He. Oh, he was uh, had a voice role in the Netflix Christmas movie Klaus, which is low-key really fucking Oh, good. interesting. If you haven't oh, seen Klaus that. Klaus is I actually, great. I really liked that movie. Uh, anyway, so yes, they're in, they're in discussion to put Jimmy into a home, into like the special home, and it, it cuts over to you see the other half of the family, and you get you kind of this is the first hint that you see mm. that this family is estranged. Yeah, uh, the mom and dad are not together. Um, any thoughts on these first couple seeds though? Like uh, I, I, you know, like Jimmy and the parents. Any 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 thoughts on the the parents so far and the scenes so far? You go first. I need two seconds. Sorry. Oh, no, you know, you're good. Uh, yeah, I think it did a good job of kind of like setting the scene, especially like without saying there's an estranged marriage. They did a very good job of showing like, here's Jimmy. Here's his mom. Here's the stepdad. And now let's cut to the other half of the family. Here's the two stepbrothers and the father that's clearly struggling after this because he's trying to like make dinner casserole for mm -hmm. the boys and he completely burns it. So it does a great job of setting up like the relationship. And I don't know how recent this is. It's still feels like it's it's been a couple years or something but it still feels like it's recent but i don't know how, how soon the the split had happened so the tragic event occurred two years prior to the events okay. of this movie i don't okay. know when the specific split happened one thing right. that this movie doesn't do a good job of i th i feel is that they don't really they show that the family is estranged but mm. you don't fully understand the dynamic of yes. that estrangement like you don't know how they are related to each other other like you assume that they're brothers right you yeah. assume that uh cory and uh you assume that cory is a brother to jimmy and all that other stuff but it's never really well uh thought uh sorry cory and nick are brothers to jimmy but you do find out they're actually half brothers yeah because it, it, the family history is so fucking convoluted, and then it's <laughs> never explained well in the movie. From That's my understanding, then if you, if either of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this, mm. from my understanding, Bo Bridges' character, Sam Woods, was married once before, had two kids, Corey and Nick. Yes. He yes. gets divorced, gets remarried to uh, Christine, mm. and they have. Two twins. kids, right. they the have twins. twins. Yes, um, and this leads to the major plot twist later on. Um, well, we've already kind of spoiled it, but it's mm -hmm. you no. Know we're just gonna, we're gonna unfortunately have to spoil it now because we're, like, we're here. She's dead. She's yeah. she's dead. <laughs> the, the the twin sister dies. I guess she gets drowned. She drowns. It's fucking it's horrible. It's horrible. When he when Corey's yeah. explaining this, I'm like, oh my god. Well, this and is they wild. go so far as to be like, not only like she wasn't like swept down river. Like they, she, he was like she she died in front he of him. Like they made specific. very he specific. He was there and he like, saw it. Happen. He was there. He saw it. She drowned in a puddle. He she didn't move. Like I just holy shit. Like yeah. what. Um, also what bothered me about that scene. So J Jimmy has a, a photograph of the whole family in the, the, mm -hmm. the whole, the, you know, with the, the leads up to the going back to the fucking the dinosaur. Um, they're the exact same. Everyone in that photo is the exact same age as they are now. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. so if that is a photo of the whole family and Jennifer is in that photo, like, did this just happen? like just happen because those mm. all of those kids are exactly the same age as they are now yeah it is it <laughs> i didn't even think about that you're right because they, they would have been two years younger at the time that photo right. was taken at least at least two years younger right. and they're um, young so they would have at least like changed a little bit yeah you would have noticed yeah exactly it i didn't even think about that and but it it's it's just so confusing because they don't they don't broadcast any of this. They they mentioned their half nope. brothers, but you know the yeah. whole backstory of like the dad getting divorced, getting remarried, the kid drowning, um, and then that's why the family splits apart. It's a really tragic 
backstory that yeah. in honestly in almost any other movie would be a really interesting thing to add to the plot and in this they just kind of glaze over it like it's it's the primary crux of the plot but it still yeah, feels it would like be it's the beginning of a over. horror film like yeah. where <laughs> yeah, Je- yeah. where Jennifer is haunting them right yeah. like yeah. that's yeah. like a sleepaway camp be like <laughs> Right, she drowned, she drowned right in front of him. Well, especially like with how Jimmy like, acts, you like you would think like, oh, he's still seeing his sister, or he can hear yeah, her yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why he doesn't yeah. talk or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It totally sets up for a horror. You movie. could recut this movie into oh, like a 100%. trailer into a horror movie. Like drop like, the saturation, make it dark, add some yeah. horror music behind it. Especially with like, get a still, uh, get a like uh, the slow slow down the shot of Bo Bridges eating the nasty like food that he's making <laughs> the and, casserole, like, <laughs> and it just and then him like doing it, like you could totally turn that into him eating something nasty, um, <laughs> in like a horror movie. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Cuts to like the Lost Boys maggots. <laughs> 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 I, I kind of want to see some, people out there. If you're if you're good with uh, film, recut yeah, the movie into horror a horror trailer. Recut this. That would that'd be fucking great. Uh, but so Corey is hell bent now because no one seems to care about Jimmy except for him. Not his dad. Not his brother, and he even calls him out. It's like, is it just because he's like a hat? Like he calls out his brother. Is it because he's your half brother that you don't care? Mm. Type of thing, and it the the thing that like kills me about this is like the setup could have been so much more interesting not necessarily for a nintendo movie but like the whole the whole oh it could have been more interesting for a nintendo movie <laughs> yeah. any yeah, other so, setup would have been more interesting for a nintendo right. movie right so true but like, <laughs> the the emotional journey that the parents go on are never is never touched on and like i feel like that would be yeah. a really interesting thing to focus on in some other movie like they, they, the plot of this movie should not be tied with nintendo at all because it's a <laughs> it just it, it it's tonally it does not match it's it's okay. almost like they're happening like at the same time, but completely different plots. Like you'll get you get plot A <laughs> happening with like this death and this estranged marriage, and then you'll cut to like a power club and like a montage of Nintendo games and everything like that. It's like they're both <laughs> happening simultaneously, but like at different parts. Yeah, like there was a B team that was like filming a different movie simultaneously, <laughs> yeah. and then they just like and they weren't talking to each other, and then at the yeah. end they just cut they just cut the two together. There's exactly. I'm sure there's so many movies out there. I was actually doing research for uh, my next still bonding episode. And the one we were talking about, like just in terms of shit like that, they were filming. It was Moonraker and they were filming that with like four different teams across three different countries and like three different studios oh all gosh. at the same time over the course of a few months. And I'm like, a recipe I could, for disaster. I could totally picture shit like that in like this happening where they just filmed a whole bunch of stuff or like all right we got to make this work somehow <laughs> put some nintendo in there it'll be fine family plot and cut in nintendo back to the family plot child cut drowning nintendo. family <laughs> plot child drowning power glove i love the power glove uh they also swear can we uh, yeah. also touch on that like the <laughs> whole do, movie like there's a lot. lot of swearing and i'm like what it, Sorry. it was the 80s man you know like kids movies you could swear in kids movies the goonies that's why like that's why i want to like i would love to like they never would i'm sure but like i would love to talk to someone like at nintendo who was like in charge of their like licensing or whatever and like like what exactly was the oversight because like yeah some i'm place, so curious some spots and i'll talk about it later when we get to like the nintendo gameplay counselor stuff uh some spots they get it spot on like they definitely were consulting a lot on certain mm. areas and then other areas it's just like so throwaway it's like i, just, I don't i don't understand it doesn't make any sense so uh <laughs> cory uh or yeah cory breaks him out of the home because and he wants to take him to california and he decides this by throwing darts at a map and a dart lands on california Dude, I, I knew it as he was throwing the darts and saying names, I was like, he's going to end. He's going to hit California with the last dart and be like, California. And then he just leaves. He's like, I know what I have to do. What a wild plot device. Just, I mean, it, it, I've seen worse, but it, yeah. So he decides to break him out of the home. Sorry, Stefan. It looks like you want to say something here. So there was a world in which he hit a different state. And the whole time, <laughs> yeah. Jimmy's like, California. And he's, he's like, like, nope, yeah, yeah, Iowa. Yeah, Jimmy, California. <laughs> he's just going to Iowa <laughs> instead. He's actually going to Quebec. 
Yeah, it's like, <laughs> he's just going up Siberia. To Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna cross the oh, Bering man. Strait. <laughs> they're just floating on the power glove across the Bering Strait. Um, <laughs> right. He just happened to want to go with the same place Jimmy actually wanted to go. Right. Exactly. Oh, that's funny. Uh, they but they decide to start traveling across the country, and this sets off in a crazy chase for the dad uh so i i should really have their names up in front of me the dad sam and nick, dad and the brother sam and nick are going after him the mom and uh christine and mr bateman uh decide to send out a, basically the child a child hunter he just takes a child hunter a ch- yes oh he's cons- he's a guy who tracks down runaways but for all intents and purposes mm. he's a child hunter it's creep. It's I mean, it creepy it, as hell. It almost specifically like he's like I hunt down children, and like that's his main like yeah, he line does of say work. Like that's like, oh, well, and that's like sort of. So there was this big red flag when they first introduced that guy, where he's just like, yeah, uh, I make my living doing this, so stay out of my way. <laughs> like the yeah. moment that like I am the a parent, he leaves the building, and and he's like, yeah, stay out of my way. I'm like, oh, you know what? We're not gonna hire you. That's actually. That's not happening anymore. Like, I don't understand how they, like, that dude is so creepy and going after my child. There is yeah. n- no world would I employ that person. He also has, like, a, like, he was wearing a bolo tie. And or I think it's a, immediate red flag. I was like, <laughs> no, like, this guy's, this guy's well, evil. He's got something weird going on with his hair, too. I'm not talking about his hairline or anything like that, but he, I think it's supposed to be like the, the, the thing that connects to the back of his glasses, the strap for the his glasses mm. strap. But there's, I swear there's stuff that goes up above his head, too, not just down behind his neck, but like up and around it. I don't know. I'm. I'm not going to pay that much attention to it, but I'm just, I have the scene up in front of me now. And I'm like, he just, something is off about his appearance. But what I love everything, the, his whole dynamic, Mr. Putnam is a name. Once again, another character that doesn't get a first name. And the, 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 the second interaction he has with Nick and Sam, the dad and son, is he slashes their tires? <laughs> he fucking pops yeah, I was them. like, my man, like commits a felony. Like the first yeah. chance he can get, he slashes someone's tires. I'm like, dude, stop. Which just doesn't like. Obviously, okay. If if the if the mother and Bateman are paying this guy, at right. what point does the dad and Nick go like, hey, he's trying to kill us? Can you they just, must be paying him a lot. Can you just say you're not going to pay him, and then he'll just stop hunting our son? Like, <laughs> because he's trying to kill us. Like, I don't... Yes. What's even more wild about that scene, too, is... And we, we're going to have to jump back, because I didn't realize that this... I, I got a little out of order with the scenes. Um, this scene happens after they... they uh, Corey and Jimmy meet Haley, played by Jenny. Haley, you're, you're yeah. the love of your life, Jenny Lewis. Yes, and yes. Um, we'll get to that scene in just a moment. But what's wild about you know the whole confrontation between the dad and the son and Putnam is that after he slashes the tires, dad, you know, Bo Bridge is understandably pretty fucking pissed. Comes out, starts like getting in his face, and the dude just holds a knife to him, and he <laughs> runs. And <laughs> Bo Bridges goes to his truck, gets a shovel. And starts beating the shit out of his car. And the guy's like, hey, I thought you were cool. <laughs> Be cool. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's wild. There's a quote as he's driving away. He leans out the window and says, I don't appreciate this, Woods. You have no class. No class at all. And then drives away. He, After the dude took a screwdriver After to his he slashed tires. his tires. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, my fucking God. I love that line so much. Also, it really bothers me that he, like, attacked that car with that shovel in, like, all of the least, like, yeah, useful places. Yeah, why didn't you go for... I was like, he's gonna go for windshield, and then he yeah, just smashed the windshield. I was like, bro, rookie he mistake. He breaks the same <laughs> light twice. If you watch the yeah. scene, he breaks the same headlight twice. <laughs> and then you he, like, javelin... Every he time. javelin throws... The 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 shovel at the end is, that that's classy right there. <laughs> Real class. Putnam is wrong. He does indeed have class. I, yeah, he's like no class, no class at all. I was like, bro. What's funny too is if you watch all the scenes with that, you notice for some reason. I don't. I guess on the way to finding out that Jimmy had run away. They were doing lands. Oh, he he runs a landscaping company, and for mm, some reason, mm. there's a tree in the bed of his truck the entire like fucking movie. 
it's with them the entire ride, and there's just leaves are less and less as the movie goes on. It's just, it's just I'd like to right think there. that that's like clever branding, like that that tree just lives in his truck for like, <laughs> you know, it's a conversation starter. There's like, why is there a tree in your truck? Oh, I'm a like, well, let me tell you. Me, well, hey, I can put this maple in your backyard for. <laughs> it's, it's his uh, business card. It's just the giant <laughs> tree. That's his business. Yeah. Card. He just drops trees yeah, no, off. Okay. It's got his his his, com- his phone numbers like etched into the trunk. Here you go. Nineteen eighties <laughs> like, viral marketing, baby. <laughs> Before the internet existed, this is how you went viral. You just delivered business tree business. Delivered cards. trees <laughs> to people's houses. <laughs> Oh, I man. want this to exist. What a dumb idea. Let's do uh, So a couple scenes prior, uh, like you said, the, a lot of the movie is it cuts to Corey and Jimmy. And as this new character, we're about to meet Haley traveling across the country to go to video Armageddon, mm. a video game tournament. So that way, Jimmy or Corey can use that to prove that Jimmy doesn't need to go into a home and Jenny can or sorry Haley can use the money to basically uh, for her own purposes which we'll get to in a moment um mm-hmm. and that the, the the movie pretty much for the vast majority of it it just cuts back and forth between father and son misadventures and fighting against Putnam and or Putnam mm-hmm. and Haley Jimmy and Corey going through their adventures but when they first meet Haley uh, Jimmy or Corey is trying to buy a, a bus ticket to California and Kaylee is just sitting in the bus station, eyes them up immediately, sees that they're, they're nervous around the cop and decides to go check it out. And her first fucking line <laughs> in the entire movie is, uh, hey, what are you guys? Hi, I'm Haley. What are you guys doing over here? And you better tell me or I'll scream. <laughs> she just runs up great way to make friends Haley great way like zero to a hundred nothing in between she <laughs> just says hi and then threatens to basically like dog whistle them also can we stop for a minute and talk about the <clears throat> the leap in logic that Fred Savage's character has in that he's like oh yeah I will make people think that my kid doesn't or that my kid brother doesn't have to go to a home because he's good at video games <laughs> like i just don't like what like i don't understand it's don't definitely understand. you know it, it kind of makes sense because it feels like a very kid way to solve this problem that is his true. brother's going away that and he's like you know what logic. if i can show my parents that he's good at video games they won't make him go and it seems like a very young kid but like <laughs> solution to the problem but fred savage's age he would be old enough to know that's not a that's not that's like a that's six fair. or seven year old logic like i want to show them that i can yeah. play video games and that's how i i'm independent but like with <laughs> this fred like Fred Savage, I want to say, was like thirteen or I think he he was twelve oh, and turned thirteen old. during the filming of this movie. Also, going back for a uh, like half a scene to where Fred Savage's character breaks him out of the of the home. He breaks Jimmy out of the Jimmy's already in a home. Yeah, when he when he yes. when he breaks Jimmy him out. does go to a home. Yeah, and they escape into a, I'm assuming, non climate controlled box truck. In the middle of the like Utah desert, <laughs> with a bunch of twinkies, and I'm like, yeah, and with I'm like, there's no twinkies. way, there's zero chance that those two kids survive that that encounter. <laughs> oh, like no. they would absolutely have baked to death in the back of that truck. Oh my god, I can't even think. Like, oh, I didn't even think about that. It's probably like a hundred like, degrees because they show that they have that establishing shot of that truck yeah. driving like They're driving into through the, the desert. desert through yes. the desert. The, yeah, there's no way. Zero way that they don't it's just, just barbecue. Just, they open the back and it's just dead kids and then credits roll. Awesome. And they're like, oh, there you go. It's <laughs> yeah. done. Also, I want to know what that driver's route is. They make him drive through a desert to deliver hostess d- treats to different to different stores. Because it's got to get their To be man. fair, it was, it, it, was, it was hostess and Wonder Bread. Oh. <laughs> so, like, oh. he could have been delivering both. bread. It was both of them. Yeah. <laughs> I just, but, like, what route is that? Like, how far is the st- d- distance between his next? stop in the one he was just at he was in the middle of bumblefuck with a gas station and then he has to drive into the desert for presumably three to four hours to his next stop it's a 
it's to it's a, a mental to a mental institution driver. in the middle of the desert. Yeah. <laughs> like where is this? Where is this mental You're, institution he, in oh, the middle of the desert? He starts off at a mental institution. You're right. He drops off Twinkies for the mental institution, and then his next station, mm-hmm. his next stop is a gas station a hundred miles away in the desert. <laughs> right it tracks it tracks you know it makes sense i didn't the logistics of this i don't uh, i'm amazed hostess and wonder bread are still in business after these poor logistics skills that they the poor logistics <laughs> yeah. that they're using because that is not an efficient use of that driver's time i'm just saying but it does show that it does show the tenacity of their employees the dedication <laughs> of the hostess employees they will go to any means to get you your treats that guy's putting the wonder in Wonder Bread. Know what I'm saying? Hey. I, we got to know who that driver is now. I got to look up. Yeah. You, What's his? He wouldn't have been credited. Driver he doesn't one. have a speaking wonder, role. Wonder Bread driver one. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's what I was saying. Wonder Bread driver one. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I wonder if it's in the credits. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm, gonna I, I'm sure he is. He. I, yeah. I, I, I want him to be. Sorry. Go ahead, Jared. I was just gonna say. Also, the scene when he breaks Jimmy out of the the institution there he just like walks in backpack skateboard walks in and they both just walk out like no sneaking past the thing's empty and that's pretty much it it was it was wild that he just walked in there like come on jimmy we're gonna go and then they just dip yeah and like all the kids are just like staring off into space the doors are all open and they're all just like sitting on their beds watching tv (laughs) i'm trying to see i i don't see anything so far for like a truck driver i do see like a trucker but that's not really – there's a stick, no, man. probably – Well, uh, even if the credits don't see you, we see you, Wonder Bread Driver. We here right. acknowledge your your accolades. Yeah, I'm – He's probably dead. I'm, I'm, He's probably <laughs> in the desert somewhere. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so – they they have they do get out of that that Twinkie truck, and uh, they end up traveling down the desert on a skateboard, which seems very safe. Uh, classic, sure. classic down a desert highway, uh, and they they camp out overnight. Or sorry, that that was all before they met Haley. But we're at the yeah. scene where they meet Haley, mm. and Haley is just the wildest character. Like I said, zero chill, zero to one hundred off the bat, and they. They are able to win money off of her because she thinks that she can beat Jimmy in in video games. Jimmy uh, does beat her, and she's like, "Oh, you swindled me!" Even though he didn't like that. Like they do a lot of conning throughout this movie. This was yes. not them conning. He said he could flat out beat her. He didn't try to t- like like he didn't lie to her. He didn't make her think that uh that he was worse than he actually was. Um, right. They end up missing the bus though, and she's like, "Well, I'll I'll find a way to get us across the country. Don't you worry, I'll figure it out." And they hitch a ride on in the back of like some farmer's like truck with some livestock in it, and the, there's just something about eighties move eighties and nineties movies with just violence towards children inflicted like from adults. Yes, Jesus, this scene was <laughs> wild because the minute the driver kind of turns back and Haley's kind of shuffling through the money that she has, they it's slam just a bunch on the brakes. Yeah, exactly. First of all, just a bunch of ones. They slam on the brakes and go yeah, back there like and bucks. steal all the money from them. And like, it's terrifying. And there's like fun, silly music playing in the background. It's like, these adults are it's stealing like money Hill. from this. Ju- yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, and Jenny has a line, sorry, just in thinking of the complete non-kid tone of this movie, besides yeah. the fact that adults just rob children, just flat out rob them and leave them to die on the side of a road. Also, just like violently touch them for no reason. Yes. Oh, yeah. Grabbing Haley and just picking her up and tossing are her that, around. Are those like stranger kids? They were like looking into a, uh, into like a, um, Putnam, Putnam is looking for the two of them and they're like in a, uh, they're like, there's these kids from the back. Uh, that are looking into like the yeah. uh, Grand Canyon oh, or yes. something. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And he like grabs this kid by the shirt and like pulls him up. Like I'm like Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. This, no, all the no one has any chill in this movie. It's not insane. at all. Also, fun, fun anecdote. When I was researching this last night, I, I found a thread on Reddit because there's this, there's this there's this line when they're in the bus station and Jimmy's playing Double Dragon. That's how they mm. first like figure out that he's good. And Fred Savage goes, 
fifty thousand on Double Dragon, and <laughs> bless their heart, the Reddit community like figured out like if you could oh get gosh, fifty thousand on Double Dragon in that spot. And there's like there's no like, and th- 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 this thread is so funny because like these kids are like, there's no way that he could have gotten fifty thousand to the spot without cheating. Like, and like yeah, it's, it's it's really funny that someone just went through the <laughs> that's took so it that funny. Seriously. They try to find F- the continuity, out. be like, mm, yeah, you can't do yeah. that. There's yeah. actually a really I saw uh th- there's been a couple reunions of the wizard and there is one that um Ray Barnhold of Retronauts fame uh he's no longer with mm. Retronauts now he d- he does uh no more whoppers is his podcast and he also yes. has his own game studio Bipedal Dog um I believe that's his game studio uh he has a video on his youtube channel it's a minute and a half of the wizard reunion it's just a few questions and a few q and a's and that kind of stuff and the the actor who plays jimmy luke edwards talks about like someone asked him like did you actually play any of these games he's like no all of those were on a loop like there's gonna there will be scenes where you'll see me walking away and the game is still playing in the background like i didn't play anything on screen (laughs) Yeah, or he That's starts. Funny. You you can hear the controller on the arcade game during the intro to Double Dragon <laughs> in the, the opening sequence. That's funny. like as as if he's playing, and which you don't play through that scene. It's it's just it's prescripted. But mm-hmm. I I love stuff like that. I it, I know I shouldn't, but like I kind of love when movies just don't understand video games, especially older movies, even though this well, yeah. one was supposed to. It's a lot uh, of, like, the controller moving and, like, play, pressing mm-hmm. every button at once. Well, also, like, in that, if you look at some of that footage, too, too like, whoever did capture that footage is just objectively bad. Like, <laughs> like, in, 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 like, even if you've never played Mario 3, people who are familiar... Uh, you know, ostensibly, these kids have played the two previous Marios, right? So they right. understand how to play a Mario game, right? And there's just, like, shots in that competition where they're, like, trying to rack up a high score as fast as they can. And it's, like, the turtle's walking over. And, like, and they just walk waits, over to the turtle. And, then and he just waits and then jumps. And it's, like, <laughs> what? Like, no one. <laughs> no kidding. Why did that? How did that get into the movie? Right. The The... One other thing about this scene with the farmers mugging the kids that I wanted to talk about, though, is... <laughs> Going back to the farmer mugging. <laughs> <laughs> farmer think, mugging. Sentence that I never thought w- anyone would ever utter, but here we are. Welcome to the wizard. Um, there's a scene... There, Haley's talking about her personal life, and she says, you yeah. know, my mom's not... not here anymore I, I think she makes it sound like her mom died i can't yeah quite. she said she packed it in she packed it in yeah. that's what she said yeah. yeah and she goes she was a showgirl she had really nice legs i got her legs do you want to see and i'm like yeah what i was the like what kind of a line is that <laughs> did she say did she say what uh, i thought she said what do you think something, something like along those lines like hey but, look at my legs do they look like she's my mom's wearing legs? pants <laughs> 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 I, did, I did notice that she's wearing pants when she says that uh, line it's she also says something when she's talking about like her past. She says the quote is you gotta be pretty adult to live in Reno. And I think that's just at a hilarious, hilarious line. <laughs> yeah. There's so many quotable things. I'm gonna use that. You have, like if <laughs> you gotta be you gotta pretty, be pretty adult, adult to live in Reno, live in Reno and Reno. everyone's gonna be like, What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the <laughs> Also like here's the thing with her story. She says that sometimes her dad sends her back mm-hmm. early. Right. Mm-hmm. Which I guess is the way that she sets up all of her other things. It's that like that's going to be a lie, like and her dad is dead and and he's yeah. you know she's totally on her own or something like that. But like that piece seems to be true, like because like she does have trucker friends, mm-hmm. right? And like they don't like seem to like live with her or anything like that. So like. Apparently, her dad really is a trucker and just like just fucking leaves her, her and that's, and w- lets her what? hitchhike across the country. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> wild. No, you, you're right because she sets up a lot of things that are very like you know bombastic, yeah. ostentatious, Big and she's house like, oh. and like whatever. Yeah, yeah, and they end up being a lie. But that's the ones like, no, my dad just he's a trucker and he drops me off sometimes, and I just hitchhike. But then they home. also never resolve that. There's never nope. like we never meet him. Like we like. It's weird. We meet Spanky. Yeah. <laughs> we meet Spanky, good old Spanky. Spanky. Spanky's great. In, in the two and a half, in what? 
I said Spanky's great. Uh, 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 Spanky in the two and a half hour cut, you get a lot more character building. Oh, for him, there's a lot. You get to see a Go lot spanky. more Spanky. You get, Wait, is that you actually get, true? Or you just no, that is that? actually true. You get, <laughs> you get more. Spa- you get more Spanky. spanky. In, Should uh, we the just call it the hour. Spanky cut then? The Spanky, I think the the spanky like cut. <laughs> yes, put it on the back of the box. Release spanky the cut. Spanky cut. It's 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 for his spank bank. <laughs> ah, I see, uh, I see what you did there. Um, so <laughs> what a dumb fucking joke. Uh, yes. So they're they're traveling across the country. Um, there. I put in the notes. Just I kind of there, there's a handful of specific moments for them. Um, one farmers steal their money. The the farmer mugging, as we affectionately call it. Now. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's also a scene where. Uh, they meet Lucas and the they meet Lucas, who is kind of like supposed to be. It seems like all the good characters in this movie have bad guy correspond like like uh, alter not alter egos, bad guys that they're going against. So obviously the yeah. dad, the brother going after Putnam. Um, what ends up who ends up being the bad guy for Jimmy and Corey and Haley is Lucas, and this is where. Mm. Arguably, you can just cut this scene out of the movie, and it's a like this is this has been said a <laughs> thousand times before, but I don't know any other way to say it without without just repeating what other people have said. You just t- you could take the scene with Lucas playing with the power glove, cut it out of the movie, and it's a commercial. Like it almost shot 100%. for shot, it feels like it's shot like a commercial. You remove a couple reaction shots here and there of like some unnecessary stuff, but for the most part, it's shot like a commercial. I mean, even his, like, after he's done playing the game, he turns around almost to the camera and says, I love the power glove. It's so bad. And that's his line that he says afterward. Okay. I got to talk about the scene. Can I talk about the scene? Yes, yes, by all means. Please do. Okay. First of all, you can't play Red Racer with the power glove, and it doesn't work that way. (laughs) Good to know. Okay. Uh, Secondly, it's really fucking funny. I don't know if you noticed, but when he turns on the power glove, it's the, the Close Encounters Jingle? Yes, the, you're right. Do, 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 do. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't even right. catch that. Which is which is which is amazing. And then lastly, I need to talk about Vision Streetwear. <laughs> so I, I mentioned it earlier. Vision Vision Streetwear. Like at first, I thought so. Okay, so transparency time. I am slowly trying to uh, do a Lucas cosplay. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> using using authentic clothing. You know, like actually sourcing yeah. the pieces that he that he. Uh, really difficult and vision street where is now oh like, there very... it is there's the power yes. glove got the power glove jo- on jo- right now jo- <laughs> josh josh is showing us his power glove um so trying to put together that wardrobe and so i was like oh it's really weird like all his clothes are vision street wear and then i was like oh wait a minute Everyone's every 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 male every male child <laughs> in this movie is wearing Vision Streetwear. And like it gets really <laughs> weird and obvious when like like Lucas and a bunch of his friends are at the Nintendo World Championships or whatever video Armageddon. And like mm-hmm. they all are wearing Vision Streetwear that actually says Vision Streetwear on it. <laughs> and so but they're all next to each other and you're just like, oh, that's like a lot of Vision Streetwear. <laughs> like I don't like <laughs> That's it's very it's very strange. That's I, wild. <laughs> I love and also when you get to see Lucas and all his buddies there, you get to uh, I, I this may be a little, little bit early, but I got a shout out. You get to see a very young, uncredited Toby Maguire. Oh, did oh, I what? miss Toby Maguire? Really? I feel like I've yeah. seen clips of him. Uh, I did see the Pirates of the this, Caribbean but... guy. Yes. Yeah, so if you if I don't know if uh, anyone has it up, let me hold on. I'll give you a timestamp so that way you can at least see it. Yeah, a one hour, seventeen minutes, and forty seconds, thirty five, forty something like that. You can actually see it at thirty as well. Um, but there's oh my a, God, you're right. Yep on the on the left side of the screen, he's wearing a pink shirt and he's got a mullet. It's a very young Toby McGuire. <laughs> and he does now have I, a little mullet. And now I see what you're saying, Stefan. Like his, Lucas's shirt literally just has vision on it, just like yeah, in they big all say fucking like, letters. Yeah, that. there's so much Vision Streetwear in that movie. It's 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 startling. It's a sad story with uh, Lucas as well. The actor who plays Lucas, Jackie Vincent. I shouldn't say sad is an understatement. He this is he is not a good person. Have you heard what happened yeah. to him since the movie? Uh, no, what I, happened? I, I I heard at the time. I don't recall what actually he did, but he's. Uh, I yes. don't know the specifics, and nor do I think this is a good spot to go into the specifics because it would really 
uh, bring a lot of us down. Uh, but he's a sex offender. He's a registered sex offender. He's a he's a Putnam. He's a Putnam. He's a, <laughs> he's a Putnam. Oh man. Uh, yep. Wow. yep. It, it's just abs. Uh, it's so not wild. Not great. No. Not, <laughs> not even in not the at all. It's funny. There's a there's a uh, an article on I don't, I've never even heard this website svg.com it's like the cat what the cast of the wizard mm. looks like today and his is just his <laughs> mugshot mugshot yeah nice oh his no is just his mugshot <laughs> I mean look a couple like Fred Savage isn't that much better uh so you know whatever it's fine oh yeah Fred Savage has a lot of there's so many allegations out against him yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not great not great no no uh, I heard Ben Savage also didn't have. Did he have any? Or, I don't know. His brother Ben Savage famously co- also a character named Corey, but from Boy Meets World. Uh, oh, I didn't know. That oh, related. yeah. They're now. Brothers. If, now I look at him like, oh, of course. But yeah, you can. See, it's weird how like they look. Once you see it, you're like, oh, fuck. Of course they they're look, brothers. Yeah. But yeah. then, but until um, but until you're told it, it's like, oh, I never thought of them as being brothers. It's it's so weird. Um. Anyway, so. Back to like way back to where we're at in the film, the kids get mugged. They're still traveling across the country. Um, they they hitch a ride from bikers. They get uh, <laughs> they bikers, also the Jesus. cool adults. But that's that's also very strange. Like where they get they get mugged by randos, and <laughs> yes. then like the next thing they do is like see a bunch of randos and go like you know what. We should get on their bikes. Well, and, and there's are- no like establishing there either. It's like a conversation with the bikers, like, "Oh, kids, what are you doing? Do you need a ride yeah, somewhere?" Yeah, or it's not like it's, it's not like where like Haley Haley has like trucker friends, right. and so we know those adults are okay. Mm-hmm. Like these are just random hell's yep. angels or whatever. It's, but they're it's not. A, it's they're a supposed shot to be. of them sitting on the on the road, and the shot of bikers, and the <laughs> next shot is all of them riding on bikes into like the sunset. And it's like, what what's happening here? And. Uh, like there's there's so many different scenes throughout like this whole thing like i don't really think it's useful to go in order to the movie because all these scenes honestly could be interchanged it doesn't matter what <laughs> order they have you know what in the they movie. Are you could have the you know like the tire slashing thing at the at, like actually that makes sense at the beginning because that's like their first encounter but like all the other interactions no, right. afterwards don't need to be in order after meeting Haley, you don't really it doesn't really matter the order like the farmers could happen after the bullies where the yeah. bullies beat like yeah. beat the shit out of them and steal their money as well. They get mugged twice in this movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, the the phrase and then hijinks ensued yeah. is like perfect for this film. There's you could just say also they so- then they meet Haley. Yeah. And then hijinks ensue. <laughs> and then There's also Armageddon so happens. many montages too. There's a lot of yes. montages that happen in this movie. Yeah, the soundtrack was like was apparently a big like I don't want to say sticking point for, it, but like they, something they definitely focused on. There was a mm. lot of obviously popular stuff of the time. You know, New Kids on the yeah, Block sure. has two songs on here, uh, but then they also have some older style things. You know, Paul Anka has a his My Way song is on here. Um, but it, it, it had like it, the soundtrack, I think what's weird about this movie is that it's kind of shot sometimes like an artsy film, sometimes mm. like a generic, like eighties kids film. And then other times mm. it's a commercial, like it, it tonally, it's just, I think that kind of lends itself back to what we were saying in the beginning where like, we don't know who the fuck this movie's for because the movie doesn't know who it's for. I was like, I don't it know if they knew who the movie was for. <laughs> Like you said, like we were saying, hijinks ensue. Um, is there any mm. hijinks up until our Video Armageddon that you guys want to talk about that we haven't really discussed yet? Oh, Stefan is raising his <laughs> hand. Stefan is I raising, raising his hand. hand. Um, yeah, so I, I mentioned it earlier, uh, the Nintendo Gameplay Counselor segment. I mm. wanted to so, ask you about that specifically. Yes. You are the expert. It- on this. Yeah, so uh, transparency. Uh, my nonprofit, uh, as as in addition to having one of the largest collections of Nintendo Power original art in the world, we also have the largest collection of Nintendo Gameplay Counselor memorabilia. So <laughs> know a lot about counselors, and that's why, like, looking at those scenes, like down to like the way that the callers or the the way that the counselors introduce themselves on the phone, Nintendo Gameplay. This is X. How may I help mm. you? That's exactly the line that they tow. That's like, wild. That, that's wow. the Nintendo mandated line for those calls. So they absolutely spent time in mm. a Nintendo call center. Those binders 
are real. The, the, during during the during the that montage, they show the counselor flipping through these you know physical binders, looking at maps and looking at tips. Those binders are absolutely real. Um, so like it was just strange to be like like because there are other segments where like she literally says Haley says something about getting getting Jimmy these power magazines mm -hmm. she calls them power mm -hmm. magazines yeah. and pulls them yeah. out of her bag and it's not nintendo power and like so i'm just like it goes from like these like really like intentionally not nintendo branded nintendo stand-ins to super dialed in scenes Specific. of like very very niche nintendo culture like set pieces it's just it's so so bizarre and like uh, ostensibly they use like i would imagine they use the set for the nintendo world championships mm. for i don't for for video armageddon because it was at universal studios mm -hmm. which had just like, opened at the time it was right. also an advertisement for universal studios <laughs> right so like why then would uh, I, just, I just don't I don't understand, but anyway. So I just wanted to, to to mention that like the Nintendo the Nintendo Gameplay Counselor segments are super super dialed in. They absolutely spent time talking to counselors to film that to film that scene. There's no yeah, way they did. That's crazy. That makes me so happy to hear. Just because when I was watching the movie and I saw this, and after I you you had confirmed to come on the episode, I'm like. I want to know how accurate this is because mm. listeners, like Stefan said, he, so, he he collects all like you the the your nonprofit has this as a display. But you've all I don't know how I don't know if you've completed it or or you're still in the process. But I remember you telling me like a while ago that you were trying to completely recreate a, a standard Nintendo counselor's desk down to you have one of the original phones that they that's use. I do have, I do have really an original cool. phone, an original headset, an original <laughs> television, orig original consoles um yeah everything but the physical desk i could i could put together oh man um, that's so cool one. and i and i did for uh portland the, the last one before the pandemic um mm -hmm. can we say pandemic are we gonna get demonetized i don't care about <laughs> it it's free um, cancel cancel, cancel. but uh, um all your all your hun you know, hundreds and hundreds of cents that you're making off of this. <laughs> um yeah, yeah. but uh portland retro gaming expo uh, 2019, just before the pandemic, we mm -hmm. recreated in their museum. We recreated a Nintendo Game Boy awesome. Counselor's desk. Uh, as of like probably 1992 was probably the era that we that we recreated. Um, and uh, yeah, so I can tell you that wherever they were filming for that scene was not the call center, um, and those were not console center desks were not console center uh counselor center um tvs um but because they almost all the time when they use a crt in a movie it's actually a professional monitor it's a pvm that yeah they, like no, nobody nobody's using pvms uh in 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 the call centers um but uh, but in the film like they're they're using pvms um so yeah they they weren't they were not counselors they were not filming in the call center but they absolutely um took reference from the call center that's so that's, cool that's amazing i was that makes me so happy to hear that i was really wondering about it because that actually leads into this section of the movie which is mm. just uh for some reason i i said is there anything we want to talk about you know between shenan hijinks and sue and our video hijinks. armageddon i i for some reason i consider reno as part of video armageddon but that's the spot that's the their oh, stop that right before thing video right and um that is their last and that's where you meet spanky jimmy mm. does get captured by putnam and uh Haley has to call all of her biker friends all of her trucker friends um though i the <laughs> and speaking of well, zero chill the scene of how she's able to putnam almost gets them at one point yeah and he's in he, he's jimmy's in the arcade and, and yeah, putnam grabs and, him in the arcade grabs him like fucking the way he picks him up too is just so uncomfortable like so i'm not talking about just yeah. physically i mean like he's like grabbing him by his like in between his legs and like lifting yeah, like him up. scoop him up with his arm <laughs> like yeah. yeah and then Haley gets them out of there by screaming he touched my breast uh and then 
after that scene is like the genuine for me the creepiest Putnam line in the entire fucking film yep. is when he's he he escapes the security yeah, guards he's lamenting or about it he's lamenting about it and he says I touched her breast she doesn't even have any breasts How, and when I'm just he like, said that I was oh like oh my Dude, god <laughs> you're already pretty down bad and now you're like well she didn't even have any breasts and I'm like ooh. <sighs> It makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> this whole scene just so makes uncomfortable. Me... So yeah, uncomfortable. It's... But you're right. Haley, no chill. She went right for it. Yeah. The security <laughs> guards like lift him up by both legs and carry him out of the of the arcade. Well, and the funny yeah. thing is, you don't like in see... Oh Brother, where art thou? Where they like take him off <laughs> on the, the, the log or whatever. Well, you know, I, what I love about that scene though is you don't even see him picking him up at first. It's like you see him go up and grab Jimmy like by the shoulders, and he's mm. like holding him like really like aggressively like by the shoulders, like I found you. And yeah. then it cuts back to Haley and Corey coming up, and Haley says her line. And when the camera cuts back over and you see the security going to get him, that's when his arm is all up and around like Jimmy's. Like yep. crotch and whatnot. It's the weirdest. I, the whole scene, just this. Real who is this movie for? <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly. that's the theme. Who is this for? I I don't understand. Um, but they they get to they they Haley gets her trucker friends and Spanky mm. to get them to rescue Jimmy. Get to california to los angeles to hollywood to universal studios in universal los studios. angeles a recently opened universal studios and they have video armageddon which by the way the announcer for that that thing simultaneously fucking one of the greatest performances i've ever seen and <laughs> creepiest especially when he like he's introducing everyone and he plays with the one girl's pigtails yeah he goes behind her back and i was like what is this guy doing because his arms are getting dangerous territory and he grabs her pigtails and he's like bouncing them around as he's introducing her and i was like this is this is uncomfortable this is weird also, let's go back a half step for when they're when they're entering. Josh, I think you were the one who told me about yes. this. Yes, uh, the uh, the sign in guy. You want to talk about the sign in guy? Yes. Oh good Jesus! <laughs> so this uh, unfortunately this is I don't think this is going to happen anymore because Twitter is dying. But we'll we will see what happens. So um, it's always dying. It's not. I was nothing's new. I was when I was watching this movie for prep. I was like, who is this dude? So the guy who checks Jimmy into the tournament is really mm. like super over the top, like chewing the scenery, but not in a bad way. Sometimes, you know, there's people mm. who are a little he's like the perfect level of over the over the top, at least in my opinion. Well, he does get a little bit racist. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> he, he does. Uh, he go, and he goes, what game? They, they ask what game is being played. And he goes, Ninja Guy Den. Hi. Is, is that the line yeah, you're talking, like, talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, oof. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he, I, I love his performance. So I was like, who is this dude? And the actor who plays him, his name is Lee Ehrenberg. Lee Ehrenberg. Mm. I had no idea that he was a really well-known character actor. Cause if you have seen Pirates of the Caribbean, he looks familiar, if you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, the two comic relief characters, the one, the tall dude who like loses his eye and the short stocky uh -huh. one that they have that banter. He's the short stocky one. That's, That's Lee where I, I was like, he I recognize also, him from something. He also plays one of the dwarves in Once Upon a Time, the TV show. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he plays like Grumpy or something like that. And mm. I was like, holy shit. What like the Pirates of the Caribbean dude is also in the wizard? Like this I'm I'm pretty sure he was also the dwarf in the like in the early in the two thousand Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yes, I think he was uh, right. Uh, yeah. Well, I tweeted about that. And he quote tweeted it like his he's got like he's got a pretty decent following on Twitter. He quote tweeted it. And I'm like, dude, you're awesome. I would love to have you on the show. He's like, let's make it happen, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> he followed me on Twitter and we and I he said, shoot me a DM. I did. He has not responded. <laughs> right. Well, Lee Ehrenberg, I'm sorry that I said your lines were a little bit racist. So just in case you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. He did say, hey, Josh, next week might actually be great. When are you thinking? And I provided specific dates and times and did not hear back from him. So uh, we'll see. That'd we'll be see. cool, though. That'd be cool. Yeah. Follow up, man. Follow up. I, I did follow up once before, I'll, on my, like earlier this week. Actually, I will follow up again. I don't want to be too obnoxious, so I'll, mm. I'll, I'll follow up like in a, a little bit. So we'll see what happens. Just, just like have him do some like, just have him record some like vague affirmative sounds. Like, yep, 
Mm-hmm. That's how it was. And then just like layer <laughs> just him in. Layered this in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being a great interview, Lee. Yep. 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 That's how it was. <laughs> Do you have anything that he does? Do you have anything you'd like to promote? That's how it was. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to oh. see it. <laughs> Oh That's my amazing. The, 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 the Lee Amberg soundboard. That's what you need. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I just use all his lines from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> I, I'm sorry that we made fun of your mildly racist line in the, in the Wizardly. <laughs> That's how it was. <laughs> That's, you know what? That's how it was. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, no, he seems like a good dude, though. Like, from everything. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. He's, he's, I, I was so surprised that he even responded to me on Twitter. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, everything I, in the 80s was mildly racist. <laughs> it's very true. But That's we get very to, true. <laughs> it, it's like not even. That's an understatement almost. Um, but we get to video Armageddon itself. And mm. I love the set that they built for this thing it is so fucking cool mm. i still don't understand why it's just not the nintendo world championships well like, like you're saying if they're trying to like pitch nintendo you think this would be the place to be if anything throughout the movie this is your chance now you would think it's, it's very strange. you would think it just it there's some things where well, it's wild to me that they went so cl- like accurate to source for the Nintendo counselor desk, uh, Nintendo counselor stuff. But then when it comes to like things they can re I guess the, like the thing is with the Nintendo counselor, they didn't need to be accurate at all. They could just show someone nice answering questions. And that was enough advertisement for the Nintendo gameplay counselor. But when it comes to something that they could have advertised for like a tournament that they actually mm-hmm. host, they decided, nah, don't need that. Did you, just keep it as is. Um, but I do love the ev- everything about Video Armageddon. You know, Jimmy ends up being uh, a finalist along with Lucas, the, the, mm. the douchebag from before. And then some girl named, I believe her name's Mora. If I. Moira, yeah. Moira. She's the third. Uh, she's like the third finalist. Yes. Uh, and she has. It's it's funny though. Like on Wikipedia, she is. Like they list her. Mora Grissom, played by Marisa De, De Simone. Um, I have no idea what oh, yeah. she's been up to since. Um, but it's kind of cool that like uh they like they thought that was an, I don't know. It's just odd to me that she I don't even know if she has a line in the movie, but they she has a credit. Uh she She does make some she pulls some faces. I think that's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think she has a speaking role at all. Her last credit on IMDB, just, I was just curious. <laughs> the wizard. <laughs> no, uh, is uh, Rivals. It was a TV movie where she played a character named Betsy Lambert, and I have no idea what this movie is about. Mm, nope. um, but the the picture of it is absolutely like the the cover art for it is a very early two thousands cover art or like uh, artwork. It doesn't seem like she had a had a big role in it because she's not even listed on the main cast. Anyway. Um, but to video Armageddon, the, the the whole thing culminates when I get, actually before we get to the final part, um, there's a there's a small break in between the final the semifinals and the final round, mm. and that's where Lucas decides to show once again his true colors once again and says, "Hey, like, he sees the 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 kid catcher, and the, he they, he the did interact catcher. with him earlier in the movie, and he goes, right. hey, he's right here." And points to Jimmy, and thus begins a chase which could jeopardize one, Jimmy's one last final chase scene. Mm-hmm. You look, you look like you have something to say, Stefan. I was doing math in my head, mm. which is dangerous. <laughs> I was trying to figure out whether or not it was actually plausible for them to use the same set. And mm. I, I, I'm, I'm now, I'm now backpedaling a little bit because so the Nintendo Ch- uh, World Championships finals in Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, was December 7th through 9th, 1990, and the Wizard released early December 1989. So that's a full year. Oh, interesting. Mm. And and obviously they would have shot the scene before, right? Right, and yeah. And so considering post and whatever, so probably like a year and a half. They were just, uh, they were just a little late. They were just yeah. a little late. I, okay, all right, all right. I feel better, I feel better. I almost wonder, yeah, I, get that. I guess then it just, you know, it 
it might they might not even they might have had the idea back then, but nothing was in place in order for them to do it. The championships, right. I mean, yeah, yeah, um, nothing had been built. So yes, they they go on this chase through uh, Universal World Studios, uh, get to see some of the rides. Uh, you also the studio tour, which is funny. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. So that, that so for those of you who haven't been on the tour or at mm-hmm. least haven't been on it in many years. Um, they no longer have King Kong. Yes, it is not part, King Kong as anymore. Part of that, right? It is. It is now uh, Fast and the Furious. Oh. Um, is is <laughs> yeah. how that ends. But um, but I was actually it was funny because my daughter and I have have season passes for Universal Studios. Hey, me too. Um, and so so we go a bunch. Hey, we should go. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm serious. Let's um, do it. We should go. Uh, <laughs> But in that chase scene, you get to see King Kong. And so it was actually kind of a neat moment for me when mm-hmm. I was watching this last night. Because like, Piper, come here. Because I was trying to tell her right. about King Kong. And then that she got to see it. And like, they do, like, because like, they, they, like, they show him, like, as the people on the tram would see him. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then they also, like, chase down into the bowels of the rides. That so was you really get cool. To see, like, it was really, really cool. You get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff yeah. for. Um, you know, and and a lot of those 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 um, as they're going through that chase, they start to like go through like the back house of the ride, and that got us actually be the back house of the ride because right. like if you look on the wall, it says like Kong Wall mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the back, and like uh, so it's really interesting that they actually like did run them through shoot the actual through bowels of the ride. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. it was it was such a fun scene because I literally went to Universal like maybe three weeks ago or so and we did the studio tour when we went there and again, very different. King Kong is not part of it, but it is cool seeing it like in its origin when it was first opening up and everything. It was awesome. I mean, I guess they literally made the ride more family friendly with the Fast and Furious edition, you know, with all that family. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the Fast and Furious <laughs> thing is weird too because it's just like like uh, like hologram stuff. You just kind of just pull up and like a scene happens next to you, and then you pull weird. through again. It's that's that's pretty much yeah. All. But they do do the like it is like the inertia sort of style, right? right where like right. it feels like you're going, and mm. it's, it's it's neat. Yeah. So they they do end up escaping from Putnam. Uh, they they somehow end up back on top of the stage. I, I'm sure the physics of like the, the, the actual there's physical no layout. Yeah, no. There's no I way. I tried to figure that out. I tried well, to figure that out. Like there's down no and then he was back up on the stage. Well, that's also, it's also not, it's like if you, so I only know this cause I've very recently been on the tram ride where the entrance to, mm. cause the entrance to, to video Armageddon is on the back lot. And mm-hmm. like the and the place like where Putnam is like walking around like where he's walking around when um when what's his nuts is like hey over here like those are very far away mm-hmm. <laughs> from from the King Kong uh from the King Kong ride so yeah. there's there's no way. There's no way that they are physically over that ride. And somehow, They're like, the behind stage. the scenes of the King Kong ride is above the stage of Video Armageddon is kind of how this movie posits yeah. it, sort of. Right. And, like, again, it's like a half mile away, easily. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, that's just that. Just the... I understand movies have to film it certain ways. Like, they, they, they can't make everything mm. true to form unless it's really necessary for the plot. Uh, this yeah, was not, but, that, but, but that's, funny. that's sort of the, I think that's the, one of the downsides of using locations that are so incredibly well known. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, because it, it just, it just sticks out like, yeah. yeah. See, I didn't know cause I've never been to California. So I have to, I have to come out sometime. Come on down, do. buddy. We'll go to universal. We'll have a trip. Yeah. I I'm traveling up to Connecticut, <laughs> but, that's, <laughs> but that's about it. No. Um, Why don't you go to the good States? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need. I do want to come to. I I do. Uh, I do want to visit California at some point. I actually have some friends who are. Um, they're they're calling they're nomading it across the country. They're actually staying in California now for a year. And then they'll drive back across oh, wow. the country at the end of the year. So they've been kind of staying at all different portions of like they were in San Jose. Then they made it up to L.A. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they've gone farther north, but uh, they they're they're kind of all over the place with it. Anyway, so. 
they they end up getting back to the stage and the announcer doesn't think that Jimmy has made it so but when the curtain rises Jimmy's just standing on the stage like a like a fucking badass just staring down just they, they've, they've, they've the... gone down a they've do, gone down a service elevator yeah. That's yes. a, they they went down a service elevator to the backstage and something that I I totally forgot to, to bring up before the re- before like that little recess happens in between the semifinals and the finals mm. And this whole chase happens. I I've said it before. I love the announcer. Stephen Grives plays uh, or Greaves maybe plays the announcer for it. Other than his creepy moment with 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 Mora, with um, pigtails. When th- he announces that the it's a it's a commercial or like it's a break. He does this whole thing where his arms are. He's like pointing left and right. Oh, he's yeah. pointing to everyone in the crowd, and then. There's no music happening. Nothing's going on. He just fucking sprints off the stage. And everyone is like, all right, we're going to come back in 15 minutes. And then just sprints off. No one's <laughs> clapping. No one's cheering. It's just this dude sprinting down the center of the entire stage for no reason. I. It's so kind of off-putting because it just doesn't fit at all. Like, he just looks insane he it looks like he's lost all sanity any sanity he has he's had he has left is just gone um it happens around like one minute or sorry one minute one hour 16 minutes and i want to say it's like 20 seconds he like points to everyone and then just fucking yeets off down the runway the stage (laughs) <laughs> like and the thing is like he's running into the crowd it's not like he's running back away from the crowd like behind the stage and runs like run stage left or stage right no he just fucking runs straight ahead and yeah, he has a lot of chaotic energy for sure i love it i fucking love it uh jimmy ends up winning video armageddon and of course the ultimate mm-hmm. reveal of the f- final of video armageddon is he wins by playing a game that no one at that point in time in North America had played yet. And that was Super Mario 3. Except that apparently Haley knows everything about it. Yeah, she kept like, get the star, get the star, you gotta get the star. Yeah. And I was like... Get the warp whistle. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a very specific thing to know if you've never played it before. Yeah. She's like, she, he just has to find the warp whistle and then he can, like, yeah, like, she knew everything about that game. Uh... That's like that's like Captain after M being su- after being super yeah. upset that that there was a new game there was a new yeah. game she was like she was yeah. like screaming her head off about it and I actually like, oh, like, never mind I know everything about it I enjoyed this scene because I for someone that had no context I had no idea what that game was gonna be they're like oh a game that we've never played before I had no idea that Super Mario Brothers three was that game so it was cool to see that like in real time too and I had no idea that was the first time it was unveiled too. Yeah. Well, the reason why they one of the reasons why Nintendo even decided to partner up with Universal for mm. this was because at the time there was a chip shortage and they could not produce like demand for their games are super high and supply was low. So they they, mm. they literally have no fault of their own other than there is a chip shortage and no one could really do anything about it. Um right. so they Super Mario Brothers 3 had already been out in Japan for about over a year, mm. I want to say, by the time it even came, by, by the time this movie was out. Um, right. Because it came out in 1988 in Japan. It didn't release in, in the U.S. until 1990. Uh, so it gets like, a huge, that's a huge time difference, a huge time gap. So this mm. was their way of just kind of essentially advertising all the products that they had to offer to be to be right. like, hey, look, we can't make as many new games as we want to, but you can get all these other games that are pretty good. And guess mm-hmm. what? Here's a new Mario coming your way. Um, I mean, it was a this movie came out the year I was born, so I would not have been able to experience this in the theater. But it was just from everything that you always hear online is like this was like a seminary moment for people who were deep in video game cult or deep into mm. video games at the time for kids specifically. Um, at least from my, my perception of it. Uh, yeah, yeah they, they announced super Mario brothers three. Any, 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 you guys got anything to say about this scene? Yeah. How I don't understand the scoring system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because like they said, Haley keeps saying that he has to start over. 
Yes. But the score never goes back to zero. It's a, he just loses X amount of points. Right. right? He, ne- he never goes back to zero. But then also, and it's supposed to be point-based, but then also, like, all of a sudden it's like, is it distance-based? Because he then gets the warp whistle. And then he's like, he, like, then, catches up afterward. Yeah, he, ca- he catches up point-wise for being further in the game. And I, uh, what? It, I yeah, <laughs> the, the scoring system did not make a lot of sense at all. Also, uh, just to reiterate again, whoever actually was playing that game was fucking was not terrible. doing a good job. <laughs> like, yeah, like it was not like I don't understand why they didn't just like I mean, clearly they talked to counselors. I don't know why they didn't just get like somebody from Nintendo's treehouse or something to do to just play a, uh, a clip of do, it. Yeah, like to not and they wouldn't have to be like crazy good, but just not be awful because that whoever was playing that game was awful. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to be like, these kids are good, but they're like kids playing, so they're not supposed to be like mm-hmm. really good. So let's try to balance it out. I don't know. It, it is, but it still is like it's fine. But the thing is, they <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they the posit the it fine. as Jimmy being this savant at video games. So like, why is he so? Like, I understand that he's not played this game before, but all the mistakes he's making, like you said, Stefan is like stuff that an experienced yeah. Mario player slowly running into a Goomba or like whatever. <laughs> like Didn't see him there. <laughs> Didn't see that one yeah. coming. Yeah. That, that's like, you know, if, if you've played ostensibly, you're, if you are a master of, of the first two games, then like you're going to be able to do well with the third right. game. Like, well, or like you said, at least have like a rough understanding of how this works. You've seen the Goombas, you've seen the Koopas before. You know how they operate. Well, and the whole thing too. It's also just sorry. Go ahead. You know, I was just gonna say it's also generally just very strange that that like the entire competition apparently consisted of about one minute of Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And, and then and then the final three. <laughs> They, it was a very um, quick turnaround, really. It was a very quick turnaround. They do yeah, show, they do mention that he came into the tournament a little bit late. So late. It, it shows that, like, because Lucas had already completed his rounds. But even so, it makes it seem like there is just one round. And right, because because he said even if he got it in late, he only played Ninja Gaiden yeah. and he only played yeah. it once for one minute. So everyone, yeah. or however, so like the hundreds of kids showed up from across the country to play one round. And if they weren't in the top <laughs> of three game. of one game, and if they weren't in the top three, they lost the tournament. <laughs> they, yep. they were just done. This is not well run. Uh, great set design, great production design. Not gonna lie. Yeah, super but cool. Honestly, yeah. not well. I wonder run. how much of that still. I want to know that it's somewhere in a, in a warehouse for me to find. That would be fucking that'd be, like, that'd be where, amazing. You, where would you put? Because I know, like, put it. <laughs> so, so I. Uh, you know what? You make you, it work. You, you make that, it work. If that's you find not that, how you make this, it work. That's not how this this that's not how this happens. <laughs> First you find the thing and then and you, then make then it you fit. figure out where you're gonna put it. And yeah. by this listener, Stefan is pointing to his collection. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Jimmy went J- Jimmy Woods wins. Jimmy and, Woods. <laughs> okay, but can we talk also about how the moment that every adult who has been in this film, <laughs> the mo- who all arrive at at, at the, same the time. At, at the time at the same time, mm-hmm. everything that has happened just disappears. Even Putnam's because, cheering him on. Yeah, Putnam's like, yeah, I know exactly. that guy. I know like, that kid. <laughs> yeah, and like, like, and nobody also wants to strangle Putnam. So it's not like, it's not like they just absolve Jimmy. Like it's like. Nothing happened, and I think I think his his dad has a line of something like, "You didn't tell me he was a finalist or whatever." Like, yeah. and it's just like, oh, and now it's fine. I now guess. it's fine. See, Corey was right. The tournament would solve their problems, and it did. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it so, and, so Putnam's cool with it. Everyone's is cool with it. There, it it's just video games that wash away all sins apparently according to this movie amen there you go <laughs> amen <laughs> praise be to mario uh praise be to mario <laughs> they they leave the tournament that jimmy wins 
uh, Jenny, I guess, assuming she gets her prize money. And the whole reason, by the way, Jenny wants that prize money is because her and her dad live in a trailer, as that's where uh, Jimmy gets kidnapped earlier by Putnam. And so she just. Have I been calling her Haley this whole time? I have been calling her Haley this whole time. It is Haley. Yeah, Haley. Jenny is the actress's name. Yeah, you've been saying Jenny. I've been saying Jenny. Fuck. Yeah. It's Haley. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I know I've been interchanging the actor and the and the character's name a lot. Jenny. I was like, Haley. one of us is wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so but uh so Haley wants the money though because her dad lives in her and her dad live in a trailer and she wants to surprise him when he gets home with a house, which is pretty fucking like bold. A nice twenty five thousand dollar house. Sweet. Also, oh well, God. I mean, it is the 80s. Back right? in the 90s, yeah. But you could at least get it down. A good that's down. Yeah, that's like, true. That's in true. the middle of Reno, like, come on. That's like, you could, You're you right. could probably You're right. do okay. You're right. Um, but also, like, that's never resolved either. No. Nope. Like, <laughs> nope. like, hey, like, I know, like, Jimmy did everything, uh, but I'm just going to take this $50,000 because. Yep. Yep. Like, there's no. Like, like, I'm sorry. If I'm Jimmy's parent, like, we're keeping some of that $50,000. Yeah, exactly. I, I was like, I'm going to be a doll here. I'm going to get some of that yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think what's wild about this, about her character, about Haley's character, is that it. That this movie has a tendency to, like, bad movies, I should say, have a tendency to do this, where they stick characters together and the, the reason for it isn't even contrived it just is nonsensical like she literally had like her reason for being in this movie is that she's good at hustling and that way she can hustle them across by by using her street smarts they can hustle yeah. their way across yeah. the the country but her street smarts street smarts excuse me consistently have gotten them mugged once by farmers yep. and against by bull and again by bullies. <laughs> farmers. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not not only that too, but she we didn't touch on it, but she's the the love interest, sort of, kind of in in this. There's a the weird on again off. They her her and Corey, Corey. do kiss, uh, but it doesn't make any sense as to well, like it it's just kind of thrown in there just because well we have to have a kissing scene I guess. It it yep. is very odd because and that oh and then the super awkward scene at the end where like all three of them they are kissing all in the say they the all truck. kiss where she cheek. kisses yep. Jimmy's cheek uh, yeah. and she like, kisses uh, Corey and then Jimmy this is kisses a her too Stephen King like. for me <laughs> <laughs> this whole movie man well they end up driving they they leave Los Angeles and they find those dinosaurs that uh you they find these dinosaurs uh, I, are they just called the ca- what are they called in real life what's that they're called I know, they're the, still there though i yep. i was there not too long ago they're called the cabazon dinosaurs i was telling them before we recorded but i grew up like 20 minutes from there my first job was actually in cabazon i worked at a levi's outlet little, like, in cabazon they have like a little dinosaur museum and stuff there too yep. right Is mm-hmm. that the same place? yeah that's what, okay. So they're still there. So listeners, you can still mm. go if you want to have a full wizard uh, experience. You can visit experience. Universal Studios, and then uh, you can go to Kim's. never go full wizard. You can, never go, never full, go wizard. full wizard. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> you, go full wizard. You start your trip in Utah. I think that's where they start off. I think that's where the movie begins. Yeah. Technically, I believe that's where Jimmy and Corey and all those guys are from. Uh, yeah. You find a landscaping business. You you rent a yep. truck and put a tree in the back of it, <laughs> and then you drive. For uh, someone just re- <laughs> you tr- somebody just recently because um, again following Todd Holland, uh, someone just recently f- found the house. It's uh, Fred Savage's character and the the, the three of them. Uh, oh, Corey and okay. Whatever they they just found the house that oh they wow. Lived in. Um, and it is it is also still there. Yeah. Is, is I mean, yeah, in, you can visit the dinosaurs, but Cabazon is not a very it's it's a it's a desert. There's not much out there besides dinosaurs yeah, and like, the outlets. It's the the gas station and then the dinosaurs next to the gas station. Yep, that's it. I still think you could totally do a full wizard trip. You start in Utah, you rent a truck, <laughs> put a tree in the back of it, drive it to Los Angeles. You get mugged by farmers, you go to <laughs> Reno. Go to prison to see Lucas. <laughs> go to prison. <laughs> oh, no. Give him a power glove. Tell him <laughs> he Tell it's, him it's, it's so hard. bad. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't mean the same thing when you're on the inside. Yeah, oh, God. Exactly. Oh god. <laughs> he just never mind. I was gonna make another joke, but now with that context, I don't know. 
know if it's the smartest choice. <laughs> no, just leave it there. <laughs> backpedal, backpedal. <laughs> I, I will ruin you. Um, but so they end up at those dinosaurs, and the this scene here is like supposed to be the emotional denouement, or I think it's the right use mm. of the word here uh, for for this movie. This scene. This was the last bit of trivia that I was able to look up. This scene was written by the director the night before they filmed it. Uh, he did Sounds about he right. did not get approval from the yeah. studios because the studios and him were arguing oh. so much at this point that they literally did not trust each other. So he just said fuck it and wrote wrote this, it himself. That's wild. This is the ending. What was the plan before? I don't know. I you'd have to see what That's the wild. you'd have to see what the script was beforehand. I wonder if anyone has. What if there's like a super cut? like a the like a super cut. dark twisted ending where like Putnam wins and like takes them back to the oh, insane God. asylum and oh, like no. it's just like very it's very like you know like those nineteen like seventies and eighties sci fi movies yeah. that just end really horribly. It's just that it's just like the 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 camera slowly pans away from from Jimmy's cell oh, <laughs> and just. <No. laughs> It's oh, just no, him okay. saying California, <laughs> California, <laughs> with like a really high pitch, like me, <laughs> yeah. as it pulls back. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Another horror movie that we could get out of this. Um, <laughs> honestly, California. <laughs> we had to get a couple more in before the end of the episode. We had to. Uh, we we did so really funny. well. We only had it in the beginning we and did. the end. I'm pretty. I'm pretty proud of us for that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, a lot less California than I was expecting in this episode. But the I do actually, uh, despite how it's written and presented i like the idea of this scene and how it has this emotional through line i think that my biggest takeaway in all honesty now that we're into the movie is that there was a lot of i it's weird where the the story and the emotional arc that it's supposed to mm. it's trying to go on i actually think if it was done a little bit better i'm not even blaming the director on this i know it was hell as we saw as we heard with to make it because the studio was fighting him and a lot of stuff um mm. I actually think it had a really interesting plot, you know, with this family drama and dealing with the loss of a child and trying to and dealing with PTSD and how it affects a family, how it breaks everything up. The uh, like the dad, clearly Bo Bridges, it's not addressed in the movie, but he has not talked to anybody about this because he can't handle it. He He's still dealing. Yeah. He's going through PTSD. So it's no wonder that Jimmy is and like there's all these different interesting things that they set up that don't fit in this movie tonally and are on top of that are not explored to their fullest extent or not explained also are never resolved either yes or never and that's what's so weird about this movie to me is like the movie ends with like jimmy the whole reason he wanted to go to california was to put the, the the items that his sister yeah, put his sister to rest. His sister to rest, essentially. Like, yeah, it, it's like in the the some places I would read it, they call it her remains. I'm like, that's even darker. They would put like he put her ashes there. Oh, they geez. didn't. It's not her. It's not like that. pictures it's, of her and some of her stuff yeah. and everything. That's because that was the, the last place he remembered them all together as a family and being happy. Mm, so yeah. really touching moment, but totally makes no fucking sense for this movie at all. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Did you notice on the wall when he's on the inside of the on the inside of the dinosaur on the wall behind the stage there it says Jimmy and Jennifer? Does it really? In crayon. I did not. Yeah, in crayon. They never they never point it out, but it's definitely there in the shot. Is it it's like in red crayon? Like behind where uh, Corey and Jimmy are sitting, like in like yeah. the okay. Yeah, just just interesting. Like screen, That's really cool. Screen screen right, you'll see it. Uh, it says Jimmy and Jennifer on the wall. Um, the other thing that I thought was really bizarre about the scene was the like insinuation that like maybe Bo Bridges and the mom are getting back together. Yeah. But the new husband is there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like, well, we'll just so, make it work. We'll all just make it work. It'll yeah, be fun. She 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 legit. So she's like she's like, hey, why don't you just take our kids home and we'll talk about it later, and like just gives them this look. Mom and dad are getting back together. And I'm just like, but like. Bateman is right there. <laughs> like it's really uh, he deserves really it. Awkward. He's a piece of shit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, he gets less. He gets less of a piece of shit towards like, the end. At the end of the movie. Just. But then, but that that's the magic time when everybody's problems go away. Yeah, so, nothing uh, matters anymore by the end of this. Oh, you're right. right. I do yeah, see yeah. it in Cran written behind. It's when Jimmy and Corey are both sitting there. You can see it behind Jimmy. Yep. 
I'm trying to see it. I, I'll have to look for it uh, again. I have the scene up in front of me, but gotta get that. Gotta get that HD on Amazon. Yeah, I guess so. I, yeah, I have yeah. a total. I just, I, I just found a clip on YouTube. Uh, I also think it's weird though. If if like when they walk in that dinosaur, is that really what the inside of that dinosaur looks like? Uh, I Probably. haven't been in it in a very long time, but when I remember, yeah, that's what it looked like. Also, extremely hot because one, you're in the desert, and two, you're in a giant dinosaur with like yeah. not a good amount of air circulation, so it is toasty in there. See, when I saw this, all I could think of was uh, my family and I. We went on like a little mini vacation, like a couple, like a month ago or so, and we went to the Jersey Shore, and there is a place at mm. the Jersey Shore. Where there's this like this giant, it's not a real elephant, it's a man made elephant, kind of like these dinosaurs named Lucy. And she's like 65 feet tall. And you can literally, like, there's a staircase up her legs. Like, it's that big that there's a full staircase, like a spiral staircase going on. That's how the dinosaurs are. (laughs) And it's just this like, people used to live in there. People you actually legit used to live inside of this elephant, and but there's no running water, and they had this tiny little tub that's like the size of like my computer desk, and they would literally have to like hand walk up water with pail with like a pail whatever to fill it. Like they would have to heat the water outside and then bring it up and dump it into the tub if they wanted to take a tub inside, that take a awful. bath inside the elephant. It was wild. I would not All be right, surprised if there was homeless living in the dinosaurs, too. Would not be surprised. Hear me out. It would have been totally better mm-hmm. if Jennifer had died of heat exhaustion oh, God. in the dinosaur. <laughs> in the dinosaur? <laughs> it would have made more sense. It would have been like, that makes sense. What? Well, although it wouldn't, it'd be weird that <laughs> Jimmy wants to go back to that spot where she died. <laughs> so. I mean, if this was the horror movie, we keep I'm pitching sorry. this yeah, out. I'm, yeah, so, exactly. I'm still thinking about the horror He's movie. He's hearing her yeah. voice calling him, and he goes back to the dinosaur. Yeah, and lays she's it to the one saying California the whole time. She's the one oh, saying God. California. Oh, my God. That's why, it, that's why it sounds all weird, because she's like, like straining to channel through him. I really was not expecting this episode to pitch a horror version of the wizard, but I'm <laughs> the wizard. It, it's actually just called the warlock. That's the that's the horror version of the wizard. <laughs> the warlock. Um, but oh man, the whiz was taken. Oh my gosh! All right, so that pretty much is how the movie ends. Uh, they, like you said, they kind of imply that they're going to get back together. No, it ends with the three of them kissing yes, in a the truck. Ends with yes. uh, the uh, uh, what is it? Both of that. What is it? Who wait? Who kisses whom? Who's the one in the center? It's so. Is it Jenny in the center? H- Haley's in the center. H- H- she God kisses Haley's Jimmy, the and then Jimmy kisses her cheek, and then she kisses Corey's cheek, and then that's. That's the and then it zooms out, and I think maybe there's another. I think Jimmy goes in again for third. They both, <laughs> yeah. yeah they, <laughs> it, what a weird way to end the movie. And the the movie ends. The tree's finally gone from the bed of the truck, and they're driving off. Because the yep. the tree Into is the in the bed of the truck, even up to right before they get to L.A. Like it's in there the whole movie. No one, knew, I guess, he yep. delivered his business card to somebody in L.A. So, <laughs> yeah. well, no, 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 no. That that's got to be a. Di- mm. Is it a different truck? Well, because they, they that, took apart their truck. truck gets, Did they rebuild? His truck gets stripped. Yeah. yeah. His truck gets stripped. But then they, you um, see them driving in the it The tree still. is there. <laughs> the, tree, the tree is there next to the stripped truck. Um, I guess... But th- I'm sorry. Is the, is the inference then that they made those dudes put the truck back together? I think so. Because it was fully apart when they it turned was, that yeah, corner. It was, it was stripped. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they got a different car, but maybe they put I it back together. I think that might be a different truck. I didn't. I didn't. I because remember, what's his name tells the tow truck to tow their truck away, and then when they finally chase yeah. the guy down, the truck is just in peace. He's They've like, been, "Oh, they we the already started apart. stripping it." Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Well, they told me to take it, so I took it." <laughs> I'm like, "Is that how tow trucks work? Is that <laughs> yeah. how tow trucks work?" And exactly. actually, reminds me though, one of my favorite running gags through the movie as well is one of the other encounters between the dad and the brother and Putnam is he just rams the dude's car like completely jacks oh, yeah, up they the just back. smash their cars into one another in one scene it's wild and Putnam never fixes his car like you see him driving into Reno with like this bumper basically eating into his back tire yeah 
the the other th- through line through this movie which is very very strange especially again in con- in the context of maybe one of the audiences for this film are <laughs> are like that they're marketing video games right there's this through line <laughs> where the dad is slowly losing his mind playing yeah. video games because of video games yes yeah. right the whole time like there's that moment where like uh it, Corey is Fred Savage. What's the other one? Um, oh, Christian Slater. The brother, the older brother. Yeah, Christian Slater's character. Anyway, like he falls asleep asleep playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then his dad is like completely obsessed in the morning and has clearly been playing it mm-hmm. all night, and yep. he's like talking about getting the scroll weapon and like, and 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 Christian Slater's character keeps like multiple times looks at him. He's like, "You're out of your fucking Damn, mind." You, you okay? And like, There's... like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, so it's like <laughs> they're trying to market video games, but the entire time they're si- they're literally saying video games are going to make you go crazy. On top I was like, that... "There's a secret fourth audience that's just uh, it's just propaganda for anti video games and how they make you yeah, go it's crazy." Like... <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. the, pitching to mad. The whole thing of that, I'm, I'm pretty sure the purpose of that is because he still doesn't want to. Th- he has not emotionally been able to come to grips with the loss of his daughter, and so now, yeah. now that he is like ha- having being forced to come to grips with it a little bit by Christian Slater or, you know, Nick, mm. um, he decides, fuck that. I'm not going to face my emotions. I'm going to play video games and ignore all my emotions, which is why Christian Slater is like, you're going crazy. <laughs> Cause he was, he's ignoring all, he's not trying to address any of his, any of his, uh, excuse me, any of his inner issues. And he's just playing video games. Once again, not really a great marketing thing for video. No, games. <laughs> no not at all. It isn't. Especially in, that is exactly the time <laughs> when all of the parent groups were saying that video games are going to ruin our children. They're going to watch this and be like, see, even adults that play video games will get brain rot and they'll just become less smart. So don't play video games, kids. And like, I get it. The intention was to be like, see, adults like video games too. But <laughs> the way the movie portrays it is he's obsessed with video games at the loss of literally bonding with his children. <laughs> Yeah, or saving his children from, you know, running away and running through the Californian desert to go to this weird, this video game competition. Getting mugged by farmers. Getting mugged <laughs> by farmers and that. teenagers. I can't get over that. Uh, any final thoughts from you both on the movie? We could, we should start wrapping this up. Any final thoughts yeah. on The Wizard? We, we This episode, yeah. I'm not sure how much it's going to be after editing, but we're already 10 minutes up over the length of the movie, so, which I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed by. <laughs> so we've done a good job already. We've I'd done a good job. So. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing that I really like before we end here is kind of Jimmy's character is very like, he obviously doesn't say much. He's just in the background most of this, but he slowly has like subtle character development where he starts to come out of mm-hmm. his shell a little bit the more and more the movie goes on. And one of my favorite scenes is when they're sitting around after they won big at the casino or whatever, Jimmy puts on the fake sunglasses or the fake nose and glasses and kind of like smirks and they're like, oh, Jimmy, you're such a nerd. And you kind of slowly see him getting more comfortable and coming out of his shell. And I really like that for him. That is like, yeah, and then there was that one moment when he actually had like he strung a sentence yep. together, like a full yeah. sentence. He's like, I still want to play, or I still want to compete, or yeah, something. I don't, like I that. don't want to quit. I don't want to quit. That's what it was. That's the moment yeah. that brings like when you have that inevitable moment in every movie where all the characters mm. have a falling out. And he's the one that brings them back together with that line, right? Yeah. So I like the yeah. subtle I, character development for Jimmy. I am clearly not a mental health professional, <laughs> but I would be interested to talk to one yeah. about this film because as not a mental health professional, I look at that and and think that the way that they treated, again, presumably autism, mm-hmm. that they treated that well in this movie, that it was, you know, that mm. it was respectful and respectfully yeah. portrayed. Um, so... I, I I would be interested to talk to an actual mental health professional about the film to see if I'm right that it was handled well. Um, but that is one thing that I enjoy about the movie is that mm. it, it didn't it didn't it didn't feel like Rain Man, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Like um, 
So well, especially for a movie in this time, they definitely could have leaned into like some extreme kind of stereotypes for that. But they, like you said, I think they yeah, I don't think did they well. did they use the R word? I don't think did they ever. He just no. they just I don't think so, they right? kept saying he was shy. They, if they did, I don't yeah, remember yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, I don't think they did thought, either. Thought, it was a shy. Cause they I, called him the wizard at one point, which is how he gets his name. Yeah. No, I don't think I don't think they say. I'm trying to think of. I, I think maybe Bateman might have, but I don't think so. But anyway, the, my point is they were very respectful. Yeah. And the only if if they did say it, it was done by the bad guys because and the thing is like his yeah. Corey, Fred Savage, if it was a Rain Man type of thing, he would have only been doing this for himself, like that because that's the whole. You know, premise of that movie, uh, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. haven't seen Rain Man in a while. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, they they Putnam I know calls him a freak a couple times. You know, um, or like they they. <laughs> I love their like the, some of the '80s like phrases. Like, what does the guy the the announcer guy say? Now I'm really gonna brain you <laughs> out. And I'm oh, like, what does yeah. that mean? Oh, <laughs> I could have some different connotations for uh, modern yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. This movie is wild. Uh, any other <laughs> final thoughts? Any other final thoughts? No, I think that's that's it for me. Yeah, I mean, there were a bunch of moments where I was just like, I don't understand how this line was was said. If indeed, like they were consulting with anyone who knew about any anything about video games, um, and you know, just like like something like uh, there was a, a moment the, the, those two businessmen that they got. Yeah. They're, oh, they're, they're playing, playing the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're playing. Well, and I think it's it's like it was like based on the sound i don't remember off the top of my head but i think it was a mario game and the guy says oh that was a nice shot mm-hmm. and i'm like when would you say that in the context of playing mario like you know maybe it's he was hitting like a koopa shell and shooting it at another right. koopa All right. All right. All right. it's a stretch for sure <laughs> i'm not sure um i guess for myself any the final observations uh just i I think watching it for this, I really, I like, I, I noticed when I watch the, a movie for the podcast, whether it's for my James Bond thing or, or the, or the still loading p- part of the show, um, whether it's Captain N for whatnot, I always, I, I find that I'm, all, I'm able to focus in on a lot more of like the specifics of the plot than I normally would if I just watch it for fun. And so watching hmm. it this time, I was actually really impressed by the, the swing that the director took for with the plot of this movie like he really tried to tell uh, this emotional story and while it doesn't necessarily hit i don't think it's entirely his fault yeah. uh i think that all the plot beats are there sort of like the yeah. like all the plot points and all this the setup is all there but the execution just doesn't show everything. I'd be very curious if the Spanky Cut uh, <laughs> has <laughs> has like the newly well, coined Spanky, the cut. newly coined Spanky, uh, as we affectionately like to call it, uh, has more. Yeah. Like, would the story be better? I don't think so. Only because two and a half hours feels like such a slog. Like this is already a slow paced mm-hmm. movie, and now you're stretching yeah. it out an extra hour. I just don't know. But I my my takeaway oh, is so. like overall much better plot than i was expecting it's still just a mess in terms of watching it though absolutely question yeah question for you both yeah would you like taking away taking away the fact that we are video game aficionados Mm -hmm. would you if you had to pick to force this movie further in one direction either further into being a drama or further into being a video game commercial (laughs) <laughs> oh. which 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 product would you have rather sat through like if you had to if you had to sit through yeah. one of those movies either either a drama with this you know with this plot or just like a more like straight up video game movie yeah uh, I mean, the the drama part of it is far more interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, the human aspect of this is what's really interesting. And, like, the the emotions and the relationships between these people, which they, you know, regardless of how they actually tackle the plot or, or, or 
finish up those the storylines i think they do a good job of like portraying like these are real things that could happen to a family and these are real outcomes that could happen to a family like this kind Mm -hmm. this big situation could break a family apart and it could go to the extent of some of the children being extremely traumatized the extent of being mute or the extent of pushing away from the family so i think exploring that dramatic side of it would be really interesting and i think that if there was like a magical sequel that happened if they went that route that would be really interesting you could probably get pretty close to like uh, cutting out all of the video game references like you could probably cut it together and get close to no video game references i'm sure there's going to be a couple of moments where like you would have to to do something but i bet you could get pretty close Mm -hmm. to to being able to cut out all of the video game content (laughs) especially on that spanky cut with all the extra character building for everybody yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I don't think I could say it any better, Jared. I'm I'm with you. I would have mm. preferred if if you could if you could go full bore in one direction or the other, I'd go with the drama. Yeah, I think it's a lot more interesting. And we've seen, excuse me, we've seen a video game movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie that just came out, and it's I I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun, but it is a commercial for Nintendo. It's definitely that opposite direction you were talking yeah. about. Very yeah. shallow plot, but all this is video game. If you like Mario, there's Mario here. here. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what What do you what, to throw it back at you, Stefan? What about you? What would you choose in that out of those two? I just, so I like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Not the. I mean, also I like the new one, but I'm yeah, you know, like the 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 vintage yes. Super Mario Brothers movie, which I feel is exactly like in my head. Mm-hmm. If you just made it, if you pushed it the other way that, that you would get the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, so I'd be down for that. But then again, I'm not really like a, a really heavy drama lifetime yeah. original kind of, kind of guy. Yeah. I, I can uh, definitely see so. that if they went in the direction of that movie, because I just recently like last maybe three months, watched the 93 really? Super Mario Brothers movie for the first time ever. And although it was just fucking batshit crazy, I <laughs> did enjoy it because, Jesus, the set design in that movie is oh. insane. Oh. Like, they insane. just went all out with the set design. I was like, this is crazy. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. Dennis Hopper is fucking flawless. He's awesome. Some of the I don't care what anybody too. says. Oh god, that movie was wild. But I ended up enjoying it because it was just like it was just so weird that I I, I ended up like being like, this is fine. This is a good time. And I apologize to the listeners. This is going to be a little bit of a tangent, but Jared, I gotta ask, what possessed you to watch it? Just curiosity, or was it something for a show or for a podcast related thing? Content for a podcast. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, let's come, let's come back and do that. I want to do that now. I have done <laughs> yeah. the movie once, but I there's lots of other mm. game related movies that I have not covered. Uh, I want to honestly know what one movie I really want to do because I I watched it for because uh, I I went to see the podcast. How did this get made live? And they did this movie mm. in Philly for for where you know near me. Double Dragon. Never seen it. That movie huh. is insane. <laughs> that movie is one of, there's uh oh my god there's a really uh young like popular uh, what's her what's it's a i forget who the fuck it is it's an actress that we like all know now but uh i can't remember the name of them at the time Alyssa milano there's a young Alyssa milano in that movie and it is her her haircut is just i can't even describe it hold on i'm gonna put i'm gonna put a picture in the chat and i'll I'll, I'll, just for this that way we can talk about it after the after we're done recording but um all right that that's it i think we should wrap this episode up we're going in almost two hours and if we could go down this (laughs) Alyssa milano rabbit hole from double dragon it'll be it'll be it's a dangerous territory right now that's my favorite kind of rabbit hole though oh i will if you if you both want to come back on for Alyssa for Alyssa milano for double dragon uh (laughs) just yeah Dude, I'll do uh, Double Dragon or like the Doom with uh, the Rock. Oh my fucking god, done. the Rock! I would do that. Where yeah. they just, where they literally just insert fucking shots of Doom. Yep. <laughs> I I think we should definitely oh, do this. Oh man, I'm this... down. I'm here for the unhinged video game movie uh, conversations. Jared, I feel like this is now your second episode in a row. This is our what... thing. <laughs> this is yeah. our thing. We we pick something. We already know your next episode whenever we get around yep. to it. 
So we're here. We're here uh, for it. Let's wrap up this episode, though. Uh, so thank you both for joining me for this discussion of a classic, The Wizard. Uh, I This was uh, so much fun. Uh, to kick yeah. it off, though, to kick off the, the, the plugs and the shout outs and all this stuff, I want to hear from you, Jared. Uh, where can the good mm. people find you online? What would you like to promote and what do you got going on? Yeah, so if you want to follow us, playalongpod.com is where you can find all of our content. We're kind of like a book club format podcast. What we'll do is myself and my other two co-hosts each take turns choosing a game. We then break that game down into sections, and then each week we cover those sections specifically, and we go full spoilers. So if you're trying to avoid spoilers for any games that we're playing, either play that game first and come back and listen, or you can play along with us. Uh, as of I have two r- questions. Yeah. Two questions. Have you done Chrono Trigger? Yes, they did. Yes. You're going to you're going to get so mad at uh, at his one co- I had to stop listening to the series I, because I got so mad mind. at his one co-host. Yeah. I wanted to come on and do Chrono Trigger, but you already We did, did Chrono Trigger. One of my co-hosts, granted he also doesn't like retro games. He doesn't like turn-based RPGs. So Chrono Trigger was never going to work for him, Ever. but he really hated Chrono Trigger. Uh, it killed me. It killed me <laughs> listening to it. We did. We're, we're notorious for <clears throat> not enjoying Chrono Trigger or Super Mario RPG. Those are our two um, uh, spots on the. Well, <laughs> on the you internet. didn't. You weren't that. You personally were not that. No, angry, no. Like that me, angry about it. It was just your one. Your I. I it was right. it Kai. It was Kai. It was yeah. Kai. Yeah. Me. I. Light Super Mario RPG, I was just disappointed because I played all the other ones first. I did the 64 and Thousand Year Tour. I did all of that first, so I was expecting that from RPG, and it just just it was never going to live up to my own nostalgia for those games. And that was my own fault for going in with like big nostalgia glasses. But yeah, we've covered those. Games. I didn't mean to completely derail your yeah. outro. I'm sorry. No, well, no, <laughs> no. If anything, no, this fine. is a good plug. Side note: you and actually uh, before you didn't really have a lot of guests on for your play along stuff, mm. but you're going through Tears of the Kingdom, I believe. Yes. Uh, I, did you just finish it? Did you just drop your last episode for that? No, we have one more episode as of recording. It's going to be on Tuesday. That's the finale of Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Tuesday, nice. I'm assuming July 11th is the finale. July 11th, correct. Okay. Yes. This episode will not be out by then. This episode will be oh, out yeah. on July 23rd. So if you if mm. you do know what your next series is and it's going to be starting by then, feel free to uh, shout it out. Well, right now, I what I usually like to do too is do like a poll and let the audience choose. So the four games that we're going to be playing, so it could be any of these four, it's either going to be uh, Infamous, it'll be Atomic Heart, Judgment, or 2016's Ratchet and Clank, which I know, Ooh. Josh, you would probably if love you for, do 2016 uh, Ratchet and Clank, I will find some time to play that game <laughs> again. I was that the was that the movie game? Yes, that yeah, was the, it was like that the was game the about the game movie that about the game. turned into a movie. Yeah, uh, I, I've never played it. I absolutely love the Ratchet and Clank series, and I've never played that one. So hopefully, it's up to the audience; they get to vote. So hopefully, that one, <laughs> that one wins. But it's fine. It's exactly <laughs> what you think it's going to be. I like that yeah, game. I liked exactly. it a lot. And, it's Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, yes. more Ratchet and Clank. But uh, yes. Yeah, so any any other plugs, Jared? No, that's it. Go check us out. Playalongpod.com. All right, and Stefan. As always, HR requires that I tell you that I am a senior producer (laughs) in publishing at Bungie. Uh, But more importantly, uh, I am the executive director of the Interactive Art Collection. We are a 501c3 nonprofit art museum that travels around uh, and does pop-up exhibits at conventions. So for the rest of the year, we we have our next show is at Game On in Arizona. Uh, and Ooh. then we're also going to be doing Set Gaming Expo this year, uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and for the first time, uh, we are doing PAX West in Ooh, September. Ooh, nice! Which I'm very excited about. Ooh, I'm thinking um, about going to that. If you'd if you'd actually like to talk to me, uh, Twitter's probably the best place until it explodes. Uh, it's Art of NP, uh, or if you just Google Art of Nintendo Power, I sort higher than Nintendo does when you put that into Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Uh, so that that that's that's the easy way to find me. All right, and as usual, of course, for the, uh, for this old shenanigan of a show, uh, you can find me on uh, at Still Loading Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Still Loading Pod on all of them. Uh, as Twitter is live, also I guess Threads is a thing now. Uh, at Still Loading Pod, go follow us on Threads. threads. 
th- th- which is just your it's your Instagram it's your Instagram credentials. Yeah. So. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, Instagram's version of Twitter. Uh, yeah. So all over there, um, you can if you want to support the show, you can do it in a number of ways. Uh, ways, excuse me. Give it a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcasting app you use. I've been told mixed things. I heard it doesn't help the algorithm at all. I've heard it does, but it still makes me feel warm and fuzzy. So please, please, five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whichever podcasting app you use. But if you want to support the show monetarily for a dollar a month or, or patreon.com slash pod for a dollar a month, you'll get all the episodes a few days earlier at a better audio quality as well as patron voting rights, which at the time that uh, this episode – comes out uh, actually we just finished a poll epic mickey won and that will be the next game that i am talking about and i guess you know what fuck it i'll spoil it right now stefan here is going to be my guest <laughs> for that episode for a very particular reason you which can't we will, get rid of him we we can't yeah. i can't say it just yet i want to keep that as a surprise for the episode but series regular stefan <laughs> still loading regular um so yeah, that you can you get all that at a dollar a month or all that at the one dollar level. At the four dollar level, you get everything I mentioned prior plus two bonus episodes a month. Uh, which uh, one of the series I've been going on with that is I've been playing one of those two hundred and twenty and one you know like gamer portable systems and oh my gosh, <laughs> if you really wanted to learn all about a oh, hold on, I have I have it here with me. I can tell you right now. Uh, some of the riveting titles: Curly Monkey, Curly mm, Monkey Two, yes. Champion Boat, Sequel. Thunder Man. So these are all classic games. Uh, question mark. Uh, but uh, that's all at the four dollar level. I do that. I do bonus episodes on that at the four dollar level. And then you can. There's one final level for five dollars a month. You'll get everything I mentioned prior: the bonus episodes, voting rights, early access to episodes. But you also get access to Still Bonding, the James Bond podcast where me and a couple friends bond over 007. By the time this episode comes out, Moonraker will have just dropped, and who knows how long it will be. But the previous one was three hours and 45 minutes, so they are very long episodes. Uh, but that that's it. Uh, Patreon.com slash showing pod for all that stuff. I feel like I need to shorten that. I don't know if that bothers people to hear such a long bullshit like that whatever but the most important <laughs> shout out of course is the bit by bit foundation the bit by bit foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of kids receiving inpatient care at hospitals so if you want to support them go to bit by bit foundation.org and consider donating and also of course as i mentioned in the last episode check out stefan's uh charity the interactive the interactive art collection. Uh, I will include a link to how to donate in the show notes. Um, yeah. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, Stefan, Jared, thank you once again. Yeah. Thanks for Anytime. having me uh, all the time. Apparently from now <laughs> on, so. the temporary uh, permanent host. That's right. But that will do it for this episode of still loading. Thank you all for listening and I will see you all next time.